Hello everyone, welcome back. Sorry, that was uh, my brutal mistake. Uh, instead of sharing the screen, I ended the meeting. Sorry about that. Okay, so, so everyone just look at this. Uh, uh, so right here I can, uh, so uh, in, so first of all, let's look at the diagram. The diagram is that there has to be one, two, three, four, five, five switches five different switches and on each switch there will be two uplink ports so what two ports are here two ports are here two ports are here and two ports are on this switch two ports are on this switch and then there should be a uh, one port group on each switch so this is one port group management port group on this switch this is one management port group on this switch and this is one management port group on this switch so uh, Vasim, are you here Uh, Vaseem, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear okay. you. Okay. And you are all able to see the screen as well, right? Yes. yes sir. Okay. Excellent. So, uh, so Vaseem, in your case, what happened is uh, that you did everything right, but you did it in one switch. So you have one V switch zero, and in the same switch, you created different port groups. So management, low priority, high priority, those are all the port groups in one switch. And you have six network cards in one switch. Can you see the thing? Yes. Now I, I, I totally got your point, sir. You are absolutely right. That in the in the uh, uh, first uh, photo in the picture, you are asking five different switches, right? Not one switch and eight ports. Uh, which picture? The same? This picture or, an, the, or another? The picture? bottom one. The bottom one. The bottom. Oh, this one. one. This one. Yes. You see? You yes. see? The management has a different switch. V motion has a different switch. Production has a different switch. And it's because and test Dave has different switches, right? Exactly, exactly. So you yes. are absolutely right. Whatever I did, I did based on the second photo okay. instead of doing the I first got one. It. I got it. Right? I got it. Okay. Also, yes. sir, uh, we can. And that's my mistake, sir. I'm telling you, that's my mistake. Okay, that's uh, fine. As long as you understand, that's fine. That, yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. Sure. Also, sir, uh, we can also just create four. Uh, like eight switches, not 10, because uh, one is, I think, a uh, built-in switch and one is extra. Yes, sir, we cannot go more than uh, eight, eight, eight net switches. cards or 10, maximum 10, it's allowed each server. Yes, 10 network, 10 uplinks are allowed on each server. Yes, yes. yes. So, but this is why we uh, added two network cards to one switch, okay? So, sir, based on the bottom, uh, the first photo, then, uh, uh, it my network should be more bigger than what it is right now. So based on this 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 picture or no, this picture? Second one, second one, second, second one. Yes, yes, for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Then on the yes. same diagram, you will see uh, five different switches with all of them. Mm. Yes. Okay. So, sir, okay. as far as the the procedure and the uh, process is same, then I will I can do it. It's not yes, a big yes, deal. Then. Yes, for sure, right. for sure. Since you did this yeah. one, uh, you yeah. will be able to do this one as well. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, excellent. And uh, anyone else wants to share their screen? Uh, Alamgir, you did this lab? Yes, sir, we did together, yeah, but uh, my server is kind of uh, like a. Sir, we did absolutely the same, same thing. I'm telling okay, you. You did ex absolutely yeah. the same thing. Okay, excellent. Yes. Uh, what about Ashish? Ashish, you did this lab? Ashish, are you online? Ashish is walking his dog, sir. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Ashish is not here. Salim, uh, uh, were you able to complete the lab? Uh, he did with us. Yes, with yes, sir. I did uh, like uh, with the scene by and uh, but you know. Okay, excellent. And Zishan, what about you? 
sir i did half of the job but uh, i know the procedure i can do it sir because uh, i'm sorry for that today i mean this week was very busy so i did half of the job sir so half of the job meaning that you created three switches or you created one switch a uh, guy please I, mute your mic everyone cuz i'm hearing myself sir sir i added and i make it uh, the switches but uh, you know i didn't make it uh, port group sir so you made switches but you never made yeah. the port groups yes sir yes sir okay yeah. will you be able to show your screen sir let me check because my laptop see okay no problem make your machine ready make your machine yeah. ready and then i'll have a look at it okay sure, sure. Uh, what about Def uh, human human were you able to do the lab Okay, human is logged in, but maybe talking in mute. Faz, were you able to complete the lab? Okay. Sir, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Uh, sir, no, I I didn't do the lab, sir, because uh, I was coming very late from my warehouse because of the you know uh, busy season, sir. Okay, so the holiday very season. Late, sir. Yeah, uh, Saturday, Sunday, sir. I will have time, sir. I am very honest with you. Okay. I was not able to do it because. Okay, that that's fine. Uh, okay. I I understand the uh, concept and I I added in the class by adding last time, so I know it. But. Uh, okay, uh, but but hold on. Uh, Okay, so it is very, very important for me that everyone in this training needs to do the lab. It is very, very important for me. Sir, would you mind if I just uh, quickly explain? Maybe if I'm wrong, you can correct me. Yes, please minute. go ahead. So, sir, first of all, on EXI host, we need to um, uh, like uh, increase the memory to 12, uh, 12 GB and then uh need to add uh, disks uh maybe 12 10 sorry 10 nic cards and then need to add one uh, uh, 100 gb uh, hard drive and after that we have to go to the uh, <clears throat> v center and after we log in we just need to uh, create first of all some vms and after vms we just need to uh, create uh, 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 which uh, sorry uh, virtual switches and name them and after that we need to create uh, port groups after that we need to go to the vm and go to the edit settings and from there we need to uh, add, like add them into the like uh, groups in whatever the priority groups are and from there we just need to up uh, after that we just need to uplink the switches so after that, I think uh, this process is done. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is the right process. But the first thing is you don't have to have 12 GB for ESXi host. 12 GB is only required for the ESXi host that has vCenter. Otherwise, the second v ESXi host and the third ESXi host, they can live with uh, 4 GB or they can even live with 2 GB as well. Uh, so, so you don't have to have 12 GB for all the ESXi host. The uh, rest of the process is same. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. sir. Can I show I you my screen? Okay. okay. Yeah, yes, Ishan, please share your screen. Okay, sir. Sir, I forgot you told how to... Uh, disconnect the you know uh, so you're disabled host dis disabled oh, oh sorry about that uh now you can do it okay mm, yeah so yeah you can check my id i am wrong okay. but so yeah. right here i can see one switch this is v switch zero there are three network cards and yeah. there are port groups so can you go to networking click on networking on this on the other side networking up yeah, yeah so, this one and here are v switches very good so you made the v switches uh, yes, so one v switch for management v motion production yes that's good so you created yeah. all of the v switches and yes, then sir. in the port groups so the second thing was to create it go to the port groups 
Yes, sir. So these are the same board group that we made in the last class. Okay, so that's fine. Yeah. I mean, since yeah. you started yeah. creating the switches, that, that's yes, how, sir. that's fine. That's excellent. Yes, sir. Okay, thank uh -huh. you. Uh, sir, I have question. Yes, please go ahead. Sir, in, in, in physical environment, every switch has like minimum 24 ports or 48 ports, right? Right. But in virtual environment, in this uh, VMware, why we are adding switches instead of adding switches why don't we give one switch and assign the ports to different servers uh yes so you're saying that why can't we just create port groups and then divide the ports uh yes this can be done this can be done as well uh, this is just for the lab practice said that you can oh, okay. create many switches inside uh, based on whatever the requirement is. Uh, yes, mostly okay. most of the time you might have only one switch or maybe two switches. But if you are able to understand and create five different switches and then divide them <clears throat> with port groups, it means that you do know what is going on and then you can create any configuration. Yes, that is true. That is true. Okay. Sir, uh, I want to ask one thing. So this network card, uh, which I enter it's showing here like all eight okay but it's not showing um uh, the card which we i have added sir it is showing but it's not showing here sir uh it's showing here only one two three four five these are five port groups uh, no, I mean, sir, the card which I've added, I wanted to know, sir, it's not the showing, physical uh, card, physical NIC. Yes, sir. Phys so go yeah, to physical phys NIC. Yes, sir. These are all one. your physical NICs here. Okay. Okay. And yeah. these physical NICs are available to be attached to different switches. So you can uh, switch, uh, click on virtual switch, click on virtual switch. Okay. And then inside, uh, go into any other switch, go to management switch. Okay, sir. And in the management switch, add on uplink. Click add uplink. No, no, at the top. Yes. Okay. Okay. And here you can see different network cards. So here you have uplink one and uplink two. And if you if you just uh, uh, click mm -hmm. in front of the VNIC, VMNIC three, click on that uh, uh, box. Yes, click here. Okay. Here you see all your other NICs. So other NICs online. They, yes, yes. Yeah. So 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 which means you have NICs available, you can assign it to anyone later on. So Perfect. these are not in use, right, sir? These are not in use. Yes, these all which, are not in use. Which I have added, it is showing here, sir, right? Yes, which you have added, they are showing here. Oh. Now you can go to each switch and then assign okay. two NICs to each switch. So you have assigned two NICs to this switch, and then you can go to the other switch and then assign two NICs to that so that that's how it is. For example, I have assigned this three to here, sir. So I need to save, right? Uh, so change. Uh, so you you can have two uplinks. So change this to uh, maybe four, three, and eight. Yeah, whatever eight. is available. Eight. Click eight, and then yeah. save. So right. now okay. here you see two, two two of the nicks are here, yes, and sir. three yeah. of the nicks yeah. are on the other switch. And same okay. like that, you have all the switches with all other nicks. Okay, right, okay. right. Okay. okay, right. Thank you. Uh, okay, Ashish, are you online? Yes, sir. Okay, excellent. I was calling your name. Were you not here? Yeah, actually, I just got disconnected. My internet got disconnected. So okay. I have to reconnect again. Okay, okay. Oh. Uh, Ashish, were you yeah. able to complete this lab? I am actually just starting my machines again. They were connecting about like six uh, cards, but uh, I added another. Uh, I added another four. So I'm just basically checking. I'm logging in right okay, now. Okay, so excellent. Like, as soon as you're so ready, me and, just, just me and Ashish me. said it's the same thing. So we have already worked and almost done. But, you know, I don't know what happened with this machine right now. Okay. Okay, yeah. try spending more time, guys. Try spending more, more time uh, in the lab. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, please. Go ahead. Can I share my screen, sir? Go yes. Now you can share your screen. Uh, is it showing, sir? Um, it's your, yes, we can see your screen. So these are the... These are the switches. Okay, yes. that's good. And and you haven't attached any port groups. So, I mean, just looking at I this... Some... Yes. 
yes sir go back to the same screen go back to the same screen please yes so right here if you see right in front of the switches it says v switch 0 has five port groups ice kazi switch has zero port group test dev has zero port group production has zero port group so which means and there are uplinks as well so if we can match i mean right from this screen you can see everything the complete configuration so uh, so right here i mean based on our diagram yes you do have five switches one two three four five six actually five switches based on the diagram but next thing is you need to have one port group on each so this zero needs to be one and two uplinks to each one of them so if we can just match this with the picture you can see right right from here everything yes sir okay so yes. so yes uh, faz and everyone i do understand that uh, everyone is busy but these labs are very important guys without uh, practical you know it's it will be really difficult uh, abdullah what about your lab so i'm going to share my screen thank you faz okay stop sharing abdullah are you online okay um so uh, human are you back yes online? sorry no no uh, i was okay. unmuting myself it's okay sure yeah. so so yes go ahead please yeah so you're asking about my lab thing so i am not following on the lab uh, instruction what you have given to complete the labs uh, i don't want to give excuse but i have a plan to do it uh, this weekend on uh, i have done uh, three labs starting three labs mm -hmm. and then from that time i was busy with my job related works Mm -hmm. but uh, i will try to do it this weekend okay okay that's fine i can understand uh okay and asher you can also let me know in the chat window if uh, you can uh, let me know what is your lab status okay so everyone uh, we were working on switches uh, networking last week uh, the thing is uh, it's very very important uh, market is really 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 competitive at this time at this time due to covid uh, there are there are literally literally there are thousands and thousands of it professionals sitting at home doing nothing job market is really really tough so for that reason we have to be uh, we have to have everything on our fingertips i mean we cannot afford to uh, lose interviews uh, so the the situation will get better for sure i mean due to covid every everything is slowing down but eventually it will get out of this eventually uh, four months five months uh, it will get out of this inshallah but for that we need to be ready and the time is passing like crazy time is very very fast and i'm not i mean uh, this is not at all ted talks uh, here uh, my concern is my concern everyone is that everyone needs to complete so the the time that we have in between i know everyone is busy uh, job family and everything but the but, but this is very very important so if you can uh, sacrifice your one hour of sleep here and there uh, you need to complete the lab you need to complete the lab if you're stuck anywhere whatsapp group is open take a picture and share it with everyone you know i'm stuck here what should i do and if somebody doesn't reply please do not mind do not be uh, offended uh, because uh, if if nobody is replying then you have other resources then you have other resources you can also uh, send a voice message uh, if you do if you don't want to talk Uh, that you know this is the picture and i'm stuck here if somebody can please help me that's fine you can just ask for help in here or in the it forum as well in the it forum as well so whoever is available they'll reply back but the important thing is that we need to do the lab so next week guys next week uh, i do i don't want to hear any excuse any excuse at all uh, you need to spend at least 2 hours uh, after this class uh, maybe uh, before the next lecture and please do not come with an excuse uh, labs must be completed because the reason is uh, the information is is piling up it's just information piling up uh, esxi host installation v center installation networking and today we'll be uh, working with storage that will be another part and then uh, advanced topics of vmware everything is piling up and right after that there is azure once you start azure everyone 
once you start Azure, there is no time for VMware. Just like there is no time for Active Directory now, there is no time for DHCP now, there is no time for anything that we have learned in the past. Uh, uh, you have the custom lab, yes, yes, you can do it, but you don't have time to do the, these current lab. How can you do the other labs as well? Okay, so please understand my point here. We have very less time now, and uh, within this less time, we need to take advantage, and the only way we can do it Guys, only way we can do it, the only way I do it is that I'm running multiple things here and there. I'm, uh, so, but, but at the same time, I take my time out for this class. Also, I take my time out for other classes. This is, I mean, I'm doing it because this is my responsibility. I have to do it. I mean, uh, even though uh, I, I have 100 reasons to cancel the class uh, to, that, you know, okay, I will cancel the class today and then I'll do it in the next week. No problem. Uh, it's just a training. No, it's not like that. It's that I take it really seriously. You all are here. You all sacrifice your time. But guys, when you don't, don't do the lab, that really breaks my heart. So for that reason, please take out time. Uh, sacrifice your, this is the time to sacrifice your uh, sleep and everything. However you can do it, I need to see the lab. Even if you do it wrong, that is fine. But you, but I have to know that you have spent time with the lab. Okay, excellent guys. Uh, okay, so uh, guys, uh, this uh, lab, uh, there are five switches in this and there are, uh, there are 10 network cards in here. And I will just quickly show it to you. Uh, so my screen, you can see my screen here. So what I can do is I can just create one switch right here so that you can have an example. And you can follow this example. And at the same time, guys, we keep on looking at the architecture. We keep on looking at the architecture. My architecture my architecture is this. So I'm looking at the architecture right here. This is my architecture that I need to uh, look at. So for example, if I need to make a first switch, this is V switch zero. There are two network cards and one management port group. So I'll start slow on this and I'll, I'm just gonna create one switch for, your, uh, for the example. And guys, this was the simple example. This was a simple assignment. The next assignment that you had to do, uh, which one, which was, which was, this one, this is, a, this is a bit complicated assignment. And you can see that if you're not able to complete the first assignment, how can you do this assignment? So, uh, so for that reason, guys, uh, I need you to maybe take a, maybe when you come back from work, take a half an hour sleep, put an alarm on. I know that after eight hours of work, it happens every day with me as well. I mean, I'm not different from you. I'm uh, exactly like you, but, uh, and I know it's, it's difficult uh, with everything. So take, make an alarm, uh, help others. I mean, ask your family, ask your family to wake you up at this time. You need to have one hour of lab. You need to have one hour of lab. Uh, call the other guy, call your group mate and ask him, you know, you have to be available and all that. So next week, please do no excuses no excuses or otherwise, I mean, uh, with a broken heart, with really a broken heart, guys, with a broken heart, uh, please do not join the class next time if you're if the lab is not completed. So, so I mean, without the lab, I mean, this is nothing you just keep on getting information and and this won't help you out for sure. Okay. So, everyone. Uh, yes, please go ahead, whoever has a question. Uh, so um, I connected all the cards. So four of them are connected right now, but the rest of them are not for some reason. I don't know why. Yes, uh, because they need to be connected. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm going to show you how that works. So I'm going to create okay. one switch and I'm going to create one port group and the network card. OK, so I am on my ESXi host right here. So I'm on ESXi host right here. And here uh, I can. First of all, this is my server on the server. I need to know how many physical cards I have. So there are two ways to do that. One way is going into the setting or the quick way is uh, that I can just, I might just look at this uh, task bar, uh, actually status bar here. So this, this one is known as status bar. And here up, this is a toolbar or, a, or a, you can call this a task bar as well here, but this is a status bar. On this status bar, I can see there are four network cards available. So four network cards are here. And uh, so from these four network cards, I can attach them to different switches so that I know that on this switch, there are four network cards. Now, 
I will connect to this ESXi host. And since I'm, I'm focusing on networking, so my focus is everything, my focus is on networking. I'm not looking at anything else other than networking. So here I can see that this is V switch zero. There are five port group and there are two uplinks attached to this switch. And the two other network cards are attached to this other switch. Okay, so now let's say if I go into this switch here and I remove one of the uh, I remove one of the uplinks from here. So I'll go into the settings of this switch, and from this switch I can remove one of the network card. I'm saying that this switch will have only one network card. So I saved it. Now here I can see that. Uh, it is refreshing and one of the cards should be removed. So one of the card is removed, which means that that leaves me one network card available on this switch. So out of three network, four network cards, uh, three network cards are connected and one network card is just sitting there doing nothing. So for that, I can go back to networking now and within the networking, I can first of all go to physical switches and see how many network cards are there. It's saying that there are four network cards starting from zero, one, two, three. Now, uh, now, how do you know that which network card is not connected? So the only way to find out is when you go to a different switch. So for example, if I go here within switches, uh, within virtual switch, I can see that here there is no network card and there is no port group. So, uh, so, so based on our example, I'm going to go back to the architecture. I'm going to create a new switch called for the management, this, this switch. So for that, and then I'm going to add one network card to that as well. So let's, let's create one standard switch. So I'm creating one standard switch and I'm going to name this management. So that switch is, this is a management switch. And here automatically it is giving me the card that is available. So the only card that is available is right here. If there would have not been any card available, then it would, it would not show me anything. So here I will add this switch. So it will create a switch and add that weekend network card here. So Ashish, that, does that now answers your question? Yes, sir. Makes sense. Thank okay. you. Okay, you're most welcome. So right here now, if I if I create now, this is done. The, this switch, this management switch, I've created. So I'm going to create the other management switch, which is called V Motion switch. So this is V Motion. I still have to do one task here, which is creating a port group for this. Uh, so let's create the let's complete this one switch first. So I have this management switch ready. Now I need to attach a port group to that. Why am I, why do I have to attach a port group? Because based on the architecture diagram, there is this, I can see this one port here, which means that for one port, I have to have a port group because port cannot be created without a port group. So which means one port group will be here, one port group will be here, and one port group will be here, one port group will be here. So now I'm gonna create a port group for management and that is easy. Uh, so as you can see, guys, uh, go slow according to the diagram. So here I'm going to, so here I don't have a uh, port group. So for that, I'm going to go into the port group and create a port group called management. So here I'm going to just create a port group called management. and management and this will be part of this which switch my management switch so the switch that i just created and that's it so as soon as i add this port group now so this configuration is done so now this configuration is done the only thing is that i don't have a second network card but we can add a second network card and attach to this but this configuration is done once this is done and you make sure in the in ESXi host, this is done. You can just tick mark this and move on to the next one. So this is how you can do all the, this is how in the real environment we do the implementation as well. Go one by one, do not do everything at, at, at one time. So for example, you can create five switches at the same time, but this will, this will complicate the situation. I mean, you, it will be difficult for you to remember which port group and which switch and, and it will, con, uh, it, there is a chance that you'll be confused when and making these settings. So go one by one. So I just completed this setting. Now I can create the second switch. Sir, uh, I have one question. Yes. Sir, after adding this port group, we have to add two NIC card as well. So 
for example if i need to add two nick cards so what should i do after this two nick cards meaning okay so there are two yeah, types yeah. of network cards here there is yeah. physical network card and vm network okay. card okay okay so you're talking right. about the physical network card yes yeah, same sir, the, as per the architecture okay so physical to, yeah. network card right yeah, so physical yeah. if you need more physical network card then so for this okay. switch so in okay. my case i don't have any other physical network card so what i can do is now my second step will be that to add two physical network card before i can add another switch so for that i will okay. have to go to the esxi host and go to the settings yes. and within the setting then i'll have to add it and then restart True. the esxi host as well perfect so okay. for the network cards you can add all the 10 network cards in one shot and restart yeah. the esxi host so that you can divide them among switches okay sir okay. i have network card so what should i do like if i need to add two physical Okay. network card and yeah yes so if you have two physical network cards you can uh, so here let me add two more network cards here before i can uh, show it to you so here one network card and i'm going to add second network card uh yes pass you may ask a question while i'm adding the network card sir i had added already added Uh, uh, network adapters, network uh, cards, and I'm trying to make a port group, but all of them are being added to the the virtual switch which we uh, did in the class, sir. It's not being added to one of the switches, sir. The new switch that you just added, right? No, I have already five switches, but I added uh, six more network cards. So in total, there are ten network cards. So how do, I, I'm trying to make port group, but port group. is not being added to the uh, the switch on which i want to do it's being added to the virtual switch zero sir okay okay just can you understand my question sir y- yes yes i can understand your question but i have to look at your screen uh, i have to look at your screen uh, just a second uh, just a second let me start this so my it's so so this esxi host is starting up uh, before that uh, let me go back to zishan's question uh, zishan your question was that you have a network card available but you're not able to connect it to the v switch right yeah so okay so while my esxi host is uh, restarting can you cl- quickly share your screen yes sir why not sure yes sir sir yeah so sir one port group and one uplink as per the architecture okay very good and what's your question sir i need to add two nick card like do a network card okay so first of all let me show me how many physical nicks you have available so go to the physical nick yeah physical nick sir yes here so you have so many nicks available okay yeah. now go back to the switch virtual switch and within the virtual switch uh, yeah. so out of your all network cards five of them are attached to v switch 0 and one right. sorry sorry uh, three of the network cards are attached to v switch 0 so this is uplink under the uplink whatever you see are the network cards and rest of the network card is attached to all your other switches okay right 4 5 6 7 8 right and uh, now what is your b- b- your question sir as per the architecture mm-hmm. i have done half of my job like management one port group one uplink and you have you told you mentioned that two switch so i need to generate this two nic card two physical network card in this management yes so on the management you can have a one port group and there is, and you need one more card attached to the management right right yes okay sir. so for that you need to go into management click on management okay and add a link so add a link right here yeah okay add a link and here yeah. you have two network port uh, you have two up links already attached to this yes and so just click save click save just click save on this and now it should show you two network cards so your management port your management switch configuration is completed you have one port done, group. yes architecture done for this and okay. same thing you need to go do for v motion so v-motion, click on v motion and add a uplink 
Yes, sir. And here, just click save. So it, two it, network here it's two. Yeah, two network okay. cards. So click save okay, on this. So which means that this one is also come. This one is there are two uplinks based on our architecture, but you still but need to create a port group. Port group. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for that, group. you need to go to port group, create a new port and group called V Motion. V Motion. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Sir. And here V Motion, I have to select. Excellent. And yes, that yeah. that's what it does. Okay. Sir, understood. I have understood. I'll okay. do it, sir. Now. Excellent. Yeah. Thank excellent. you, sir. Okay. And Faz, what was your question? Sorry, sir. Can you repeat that process? My question was, um, if you don't mind, I've done the first stage of. All okay, I will. I will show you the process, Ashish. Yes. But then, trying to add uh, board groups, they're not being added to the one on which it is intended. It's yeah, share your screen, please. Share your screen. And and also, Faz, you need to keep your mic close to you. Sir, I have a question. Physical yes, please NICs, Physical NICs and physical adapters. Like, you can call them adapters and you can call them NICs. Same way, you can call physical, uh, sorry, physical VM uh, adapters and VM uh, NICs, right? Yes, so VM and NIC, NICs are called virtual NICs and uh, the physical NICs that are connected to ESXi host are called physical NICs. Okay. Adapters are same, physical adapters? Exactly, same thing. Okay, so did you uh, No, we cannot see your screen. I have to sh I've stopped sharing my screen and you need to show your screen. Yes, sir. Yes. So these are the ones. These are the ones which I've done, sir. Okay. But I'm trying to add port group, but they're not being added to the one uh, which is intended. Like the V motion, I want to add one port group. Okay. So yes, so go to port group first, go to the port group. So when you need to create a port group, you need to be in the port group and add a port group. Uh, okay. Add a port group called V motion. Let's say you need to add it to the V motion switch. Right. And then, no, 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 no. Hold on. Okay. Now go back to the port group, click on the port group because you, you have, no, no, not here. Yeah. Yes. And here, here now edit settings, edit setting code. You added it to, so this needs to be added to the V motion switch, not the V switch zero. Okay. The, the, this was the problem. Yes, sir. So how do we, go from here okay hold on uh, click on this click on uh, virtual switches click on virtual switch in front of the virtual switch this one go back to edit setting and click in front of the virtual switch right here the third one okay Sorry. so uh, this is not this is actually attached to vSwitch zero, close this. Yeah, that, this was the problem, sir. All the switch, all the port groups were being added to the virtual switch zero, sir. Th that's fine. So cancel, the, uh, cancel this. Go back to uh, port group. Port group, okay. And uh, right click on this, right click on vMotion port group and remove, remove, oh, remove. Okay. Remove, okay. Yes. Remove and recreate. Okay. And before saving, change the virtual switch under this. Okay. Okay, okay. this is how you do it. So okay. uh, first you need to create a switch then you need to create a port group, attach it to the vSwitch, and then uh, that's it. And then attach uh, physical NICs. Four step process. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you. Sir. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. So let's quickly understand that right from here, everyone. Uh, Ashish, what, what was your question? I just wanted to see how you um, uh, uplink uh, for the NIC. Uh, for the network card. Okay. Yes. 
Okay, so I am here on the whiteboard. So ESXi host, this is my ESXi host. It's a bit blur. Let me just make some, add some colors to this. So this is my ESXi host here, guys. And now in order to understand the networking part, so in order to understand the networking part, all we need to do is to understand uh, the basics here. Now in the physical environment, we have switches. So in the physical environment, there are switches like the is uh, that connects to servers. So this is a physical environment. So in here, if I go, so normally all of the machines are connected to the network. So this switch, this server is connected to this switch. Uh, what about the, what about our home networking guys? Our home networking, all of our routers are connected to your, uh, all of our router are connected to internet. Uh, through our uh, through the ISP router. So let's say uh, let's assume this is an ISP router, and we are all connected to internet. So uh, at the moment we are all connected to internet right from the your laptop and connected to ISP router to internet. And this is Wi-Fi. So this is. This is Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi are connected, and in the physical network, we have wires that that connects to the switch. But in the uh, but in our real uh, but in our virtual networks, we have switches inside inside the server. So this is uh, this is a this is a server, and within this server within this server, we have virtual switches. Okay, and guys, it's not really difficult to understand. So this is a switch inside and inside the switch we need to so first of all the switch that we create that switch has no port so for that we add a port group if you need to have even one port in this we need to create a port group so first you create a switch number one. Second, we create a port group Second, you create a port group and then attach to this switch, just like in FAS, uh, in, 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 uh, in the lab that where, where we connected a port group from, uh, from to the switch in, uh, in the ESXi host that FAS created. In the same one, what we did, we created a port group and then we attach it to the vMotion switch. And the last thing that you need to do is attach the physical NICs together. So then you have physical NICs that we uh, add to the switch. So on, on this ESXi host, by default, there is one physical NIC. We can add 10 physical NICs here. So these are all the physical NICs and two of the NICs will be attached to this. So first add a NIC to ESXi host. This is number one. Second, you can create a switch, uh, which is a switch. Third, you can create a port group and your lab will be ready. So this, these three steps you need to do for all of them. That's it. Sounds good, Dangui. Yes, please go ahead. Welcome, Salam Naveed, Adam, how are you? I'm really good, sir. Thank you so much. Adam, can you uh, please explain this once again with uh, a more bigger and a clean diagram, please? Um, okay, sure. Sir, yes, uh, please I ahead. need one small. Sir, I want to share my screen. I need to ask one small thing, sir. Can I yes. share you? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, sorry, see. Sir, I've deleted this uh, three uplinks from here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it is available now. So for example, sir, if I have to add uh, in this production. Switch. Uh, uplink, sir. I mean switch or uh, whatever, sir. Like Because, sir, now I have added because it's not showing more than two, sir. Due to availability of switch, sir. That's why. Uh, so, uh, so tell example, me how many, sir, how, yeah. how many uplinks do you see here? Sir, uh, two uh, in management, mm -hmm. two in uh, vMotion, mm -hmm. 
फोर एंड टू इन प्रोडक्शन आई हैव इंक्रीज बिकॉज एट दैट टाइम आई वॉज नॉट एबल टू इंक्रीज बट वेन आई डिलेटेड फ्रॉम हेयर टू then it's showing here so i've increased to as per the okay, architecture okay that's fine that's fine yeah yes but sir if i want to add here so it it's depend upon the availability of switch right sir it depends on the availability of the next next right because if i want to add in this sir uplink so it is not it is showing only two and yes for example if i need to add three so it not possible until unless i have to increase one more uh, exactly so, exactly right, that's sir? the case yes so it will be it is showing now two more sir it uh, it won't show it won't show any more than what you already have so let's count them say in your yes. up links we have one then 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and 10 so all the 10 yeah. network cards yeah. are attached to all the switches now there are no more network cards attached so uh, as per your architecture uh, uh, did i sh- i mean i have done my projects uh as per the architecture uh, you have so 2 4 6 8 10 yes so this is maximum you can go uh, yeah. now here this is not as per the architecture why because we have we yes, switch zero as well we switch zero yes, as sir. one and i scuzzy yes. switch that we created in the previous class if yes, you sir. delete those two switches then uh, mm-hmm. your architecture will be complete right or uh, i or i have to generate one more i scuzzy uh, exxi host and with the help of this one then i can generate one more so, i mean as per the architecture exactly right, exactly you can you can do the same lab in the in the next esxi host right sir okay. right so okay sir uh, yes sir. please yes please go ahead before before, uh, before the shun by you know hang up so v switch is a built in uh, switch right v switch 0 is a built in switch yes okay if you by mistake uh, you know as i asked uh, if you delete it mm uh-huh. mm So then you'll have to recreate it how 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 you gonna uh, recreate it just so, uh, in the so esi uh, like server uh in esxi host you need to recreate the switch and also you need to reattach your vms to that so if uh, so okay so switch to your screen switch to your screen uh, i mean share your screen and navid uh, were you able to complete the lab architecture since you joined late uh, you missed the ted talk that i did before Yes, Kambi. I missed the first part um, uh, for today's <laughs> class, today's session. Okay, so I'm just calling yeah. my talks TED talks, guys. I'm just uh, being, you know, uh, it's just a joke. Uh, okay, so. So today, uh, and uh, sir, we disappoint you today. So really sorry. Inshallah, next time, sir, we will definitely take care for the project, sir. Uh, I mean, these are small little labs. At the end, yes, then you'll have to yes, do sir. the custom lab. You know, it will be a bit yeah. difficult. So that's my point. So my question to Navid is: Navid, were you able to complete the lab architecture, or were you stuck somewhere, or you uh, you were busy, not able to do it? Which one is the option? No, Danbi, I was stuck somewhere, but I was able to do that. Okay, and you were able to complete that, uh, the five switches. Yes, I I was able to. Uh, sorry, which switches are we talking about? the the architecture diagram that we shared last time you had to create five switches yes i created two of them but something happened uh, with my whole server so i have to uh, redo it today okay and uh, okay. yes so uh, but i'm working on it i, I will be, I, i will be able to do it okay but one good. thing if you can do us a favor or do me a favor uh, If you if you can re extend that uh, that uh, diagram, uh, I will the, I will right after that. So that's right after that. Honestly, I will thank I you. I will for sure. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. So everyone, uh, we do see a problem now, and so we need to troubleshoot and fix this problem. Uh, the problem is that uh, uh, accidentally, accidentally, uh, 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 Alamgir deleted V switch zero. I mean, V switch zero. Deleting V switch zero means uh, that uh, your your uh, VCSA, which is V center, is now without a network. So yes. we'll we'll try to fix that. First of all, let's go to VMs. Let's go to VMs. So first of all, let's go to in your in your ESXi host. Yes, let's sir. Click on let's... click on virtual machine. Oh. Or or let me try to see that if I can get a control on this because. Uh, uh, actually, you know what. Uh, my other two are working fine i have uh, i just made this one like a third one and the first one these two are working fine but the second one you know like uh, if you go to the second one it's not you see like it's not uh, 
letting me okay uh, okay alamgir uh, the the one that is not working is that yeah. the one that is hosting v vcsa or vcsa is on another one uh the the vcsa v center v center is hosted v on center. esxi 1 2 or 3 uh it's on uh, like it's on it was on v 2 uh, sir it was on 2 so so now the problem is uh, with the which which esxi host the second one sir second one so the problem is with the second one uh, esxi host so we, first so we center i can open on both of them right because uh, this one is also working fine and third one i just attached it third one is also working fine right but the second one by accidentally you know i just uh, uh if you see this one like uh, the first one it's like sorry the first one is working fine and second one is not working right this okay one. so where is v center v center and you're sure that you deleted v switch 0 on on esxi2 uh yes sir because i was logged in uh, on esxi2 these are working fine like uh, 2 and 3 are working fine but ex uh, like uh, e esxi2 is not working fine okay yeah, working. so so 2 so 2 does it have v center or v center is on 1 or 3 i think all of them have it all of them have v center yes sir like once you log in i can because i just uh, made a uh, you know uh, uh, but, but, all of but bhai, sorry to sorry to interrupt but but bhai, uh, win srv01 should have the v center that's it you should not have like v center on everyone so here just go on to vms yes. you're already logged into esxi host one Yes, sir. One is already logged in, but on the two, I just um, we made uh, that uh, exercise. No, okay, second. okay. Two for now. Forget about two, because you know on two. So just think of this: okay. on two, you deleted V switch zero. Okay. Yes, sir. Since yeah. the main lifeline of that ESXi host is gone, you cannot re you cannot bring it back. You cannot bring it back. Uh, the reason is that uh, vSwitch 0 is the core network of ESXi2, okay? And without connecting, because th the same vSwitch 0 had the management port, and if there is no management port, you won't be able to connect to ESXi host. And so then your next question is that how can you bring it back? Uh, unfortunately, you cannot bring it back. So there is no way, because there is no console on the ESXi host, and you cannot connect. There is no way you can connect to that uh, ESXi host unless you are physically there. And uh, uh, I'll have to check that out. That there are some command lines that can be used. So for now, in this lab at the moment, let's not make it more complex for everyone else and for you as well. Just delete ESXi02 and recreate it. Okay. Sir, can I add something? Yes, please go ahead. If we lost somehow, uh, we switch zero. Yes. Can we not go to the ESXi and go to the network adapter and select the VM zero and then try? Yes, uh, there is there is an option. Here. There is an option, but switch is gone. In we okay. can try it. Okay. You know the switch where the network card is connected is not there. Network card mm -hmm. is there, but the switch is not there. Okay. So okay, that, it, yeah. it will it will be a bit complicated at the moment. I mean, at the moment, since you're all learning on the basis, uh, basic networking, mm. if I start doing troubleshooting for advanced concept, yeah. it will really, really confuse you at, at this point. Yes, yeah. right. Uh, Anand Bhai, I'm lost. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. So that, that's what I'm saying, that everyone will be lost if we, if we do it. So for now, uh, Alamgir, Recreate yes, ESXi zero to just make sure your vCenter is on ESXi one. Uh, one, yeah, it is on one. Sorry. So um, I'm I'm actually lost for something different. Maybe sorry, <laughs> I should have started talking then. But um, so I added the ports right to the thing, but now um, so some of them are showing up, but uh, some of them are still not showing up. Like uh, like some of them are green, but they're not. Uh, some of them are not right, essentially, and like the V switch, essentially.
can I can I share my screen really quick? Uh, <laughs> just a second. Just before this, yes, you can share your screen. Alamgir, are you uh, okay with uh, what I said? Alamgir, calling. Alamgir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's okay. You know, I just can create uh, another one. Uh, yeah, I have a vCenter in Win, uh, like uh, EXI one. Okay, so that's one. fine. As long as vCenter is there, it's fine. I want you to bring back that exercise, whatever we did, like project. That's okay. Okay, okay, we can do it. We can do it at ten. Uh, Ashish, so you're showing yes, your screen. Yes. What is your confusion? So, I added. Um... Oh, where is this? No. I added the virtual switches, right? I guess. Th this looks excellent, and your uplinks looks good too. Uh, so there are two. Uh, that's fine. And go to the port group. Yes. So in the port groups, you haven't created any port groups other than the one that we created in the last class. Okay. Yeah. So now, can I just change the name of these? Uh, you can, uh, but uh, they are still attached to the V switch zero. So look at the fourth column. Fourth column is showing you which switch these port groups are connected to. No, you don't have to click oh, them. Just sorry. go back on the same screen. Uh, if you look at the fourth column, everyone, fourth column shows that which switch we switch the port group is attached to. So from here, you can also find that out. But the problem is once the port group is attached to one V switch, you cannot remove it. You cannot remove it. Oh. Um, so you cannot change it. You okay. just have to delete it and recreate it. Okay. So in this. Okay. Case, Sorry? Can you rename it, right, sir? Uh, can you repeat yourself, please? Yes, sir. But you can rename it, right? Yeah, you can rename it, but you cannot move it. Okay. Oh. So, so uh, Ashish, in order to yes. create a new create a new port group called VMotion. So create a so... new port group. Yes. So just here, just say call VMotion. <laughs> And before saving it, before adding it, just so change, just the, change the exactly. Oh, makes exactly. sense. Okay. That's Perfect. It. Thank you. Appreciate it. So that's that's it. So you just Thank create you. a V switch zero, a create a right. port group, attach it to it, and that's it. So that that's Perfect. how simple that is. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank okay. you. You're most welcome. And uh, now going back to going uh, back to so uh, are you able to see my screen? So you're able to see the whiteboard, right? Sir, uh, just a quick question before you start. Yes, yes, so, please go ahead. Like if you are, if we are making any, you know, project or anything, it's better to make in the like second or third one, not in the uh, like uh, V center, right? I mean, uh, so if something happens, so you can create the uh, like second or third uh, EXI host. So it won't affect the EXI like V center, I mean. Uh, okay. Oh, yes. Okay. So you're saying that uh, whenever we do a test lab, it should be done on ESXi host two or three, not on not on the one that has vCenter. Yes, for sure. For sure. Because that's oh. risking that's risking the vCenter. Yes. Okay. But but uh, Alamgir, Alamgir, you know, in the real environment, we don't delete anything. So since here, since we are testing and you yeah. deleted, I mean, you, you shot yourself on the foot by deleting v, v switch zero. V switch zero it was the lifeline. So in the real environment, we don't do that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a good lesson, sir. <laughs> <laughs> What is the name of the server? Okay, so our physical server that we uh, that we were uh, that that from the right from the beginning, I want you to remember is DL three eighty. DL three eighties, guys. These are those servers that where ESXi is installed in the real environment. So these will be the server. Uh, so uh, I mean, in the real environment, when you go into the real environment, most of the time these uh, these servers are already installed. So uh, so ESXi host in physical will look like exactly like this. So your company will order a server. 
uh, there, there could be this server for $7,000. This one is uh, 1900. This is second hand. Uh, most probably this is from eBay. These are second hand servers. Uh, this is again another server uh, generation nine. I think uh, currently it is 10 or 11 working on uh, the latest one is 10 or 11. Uh, gen. So this is Gen 9. This is again a second and this is why it is uh, 4,800. So once your company receives these server, uh, ESX, these servers will be rack and stack into the rack uh, into uh, into your uh, data center or uh, maybe a server room. If it is a medium sized company, they will have a server room. If it is a large company, they will have a data center. In short, in both cases, all you need to do is to install ESXi host on this. And how do you install ESXi host on this? You will be provided once this server is racked inside, uh, I mean, inside the data center, racked meaning that is inside, it is installed and you will be provided an IP address. So you will connect to that IP address and install ESXi host in this. And once ESXi host is installed, this will the this server will look like exactly like this. So you will be logging into that DL380 from this console. Uh, from so so for us VMware admin, we will be working on this console. So uh, in in the back end, it could be a Dell server, it could be IBM server, it could be any other server. But we'll be working on this server. Uh, Naveed, uh, do you want to qu uh, quickly share your screen and uh, show me your lab, please? Yes, Adnanthi. Okay, so can you walk us through what you have created, please, quickly? Uh, can you see the display? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, so what I did here that uh, these are my port groups, and um, uh, I, I was having no, no, some issues. Hold on, hold with... on, hold on. We cannot yeah. see your uh, VMware. We can just see a Windows uh, blue Windows screen. Oh, okay. So this is a second one. Okay. Yeah, now we can see your screen. Okay. Okay. So uh, these are all my port groups, which I recreated uh, yesterday. And uh, on top of it, uh, uh, these are all the... Okay. And yeah. so just just a quick question. Do you know that yeah. which, which server, which switch they are connected to? Well, uh, I connected them, but uh, I have recreated all these things. Uh, because I was having some issues with my VMware, I had to uninstall and install it. Okay. okay. Uh, but I'm still working on it, so it's my okay. income. That, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, but here yeah. on this on this screen, if you look at the fourth column, fourth column, what do you see <laughs> on the fourth column? Oh, sorry. In the fourth column is basically these. Yeah, this is the problem. Uh, all these uh, uh, ports. Are, um, uh, port groups. Are, port groups. The port groups are connected to the same switch, which is incorrect. Uh, but uh, to fix them, I have to uh, click on it, and uh, a new switch should be created. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. So go back to the screen again. Go back to that screen again. Yeah. Okay. Now show me uh, virtual switches. So everyone, please keep looking at the screen because this is, I mean, this might be a confusion for everyone else as well. Uh, so go back to the previous screen. I mean, click on the navigation bar, click on the navigation bar so can we can see everything. Okay, that's fine. Now click on networking. Yes. Yes. And within networking, so here we can see you have all the port groups. So that is fine. But the but the yeah. what is wrong is they're all connected to vSwitch zero. Now, in order to that move it to, a, to another switch, you need to remove them. So you cannot change them. Uh, but before before removing them, I want you to uh, look at your uh, your virtual switch. So next tab. Other, uh, uh, next to the port group, there is virtual switches. You have only one virtual switch. You don't have any right. other virtual switch. And there are four right. physical network card connected. The third column you can see four, which means that six of your cards are sitting there. So if you have 10 network mm -hmm. cards in this ESXi, six are sitting there. Okay, so let's quickly create one V switch. So let's create a, one of the V switch that is called V motion or the management. Yes, just click here, add standard switch and name it uh, management. 
And so, and there will be one network card added here. So if we need right from the start two network cards, so click add. So on the same screen, click add up link. So now there will be two network cards added. So now two network card, or you can add four network cards right here as well on the switch, but we need only two network card based on our architecture. So management switch need two network cards. Okay. And click add. Yeah. So this is half of the configuration is done for networking. Now let's go back to the port group. There has to be one port group on this uh, switch. So now from here, uh, delete, uh, delete the port, uh, delete the port groups, but we don't delete the one that is default to V switch zero. So delete the port group called management, right? Click on management and delete. Yeah, this one delete. You can likewise, you can remove later on V motion and all of the, all of the rest of the one that you created. So let's create a port group because we are doing the configuration for management. Yes. Click here and name it management and change the virtual switch. Change the virtual switch. Yes. Yeah. And that's it. So now yeah. you can see that management port group is on V switch zero. And this switch now, if you change to virtual switches from the top, from the top, change it to virtual switch and go to management virtual switch. Right here, now you can see the right configuration that we wanted to see. There are two network cards to the switch and one port group called management. Correct. <laughs> but remember, it's still, it's quite confusing though, because in our last class, like when we were uh, uh, watching, uh, watching, uh, uh, watching on the screen, uh, like um, it seemed very easy. But when we started to do <laughs> exactly by our side, it's quite confusing. So that's why I'm requesting you that we understand or I understand what I have to do, but uh, uh, steps are still skipping. So if you can uh, just quickly in a minute or two, if you can uh, draw that structure once again. Uh, on your whiteboard and okay. uh, explain quickly. So that will be very great for us. Okay, sure, sure, I will. I will. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Uh, okay, so going back to our whiteboard guys, uh, last five minutes on uh, this to understand, let's, let's look at this here. So uh, in order to create this architecture, so I'm gonna go back to my architecture. Let's look at, I mean, it, the key is, guys, these uh, concepts are not very difficult. I mean, when you do it, it's just that uh, it's just that uh, what you are doing, you need to properly understand what you are what you are following and what you want to create inside the ESX uh, IHO. So here, first of all, it's very clear that I need to create five switches: one, two, three, four, five. Now you can create all the five switches at the same time. You can create all the ports at the same time, guys. This is not how we do it. Uh, we uh, so always remember from now on. From now on, instead of creating the whole configuration do it one by one. So take this as one project, take this as one project and take this as one project. The confusion starts when you create just all the port groups or you create all the switches together, uh, all together, and then it will uh, start getting more and more complex. So it, I mean, later on for me, I can do that all in one shot. I can create all the virtual switches and all the network cards and all the port groups, and then I can attach them later on. Uh, for for me, it's easy, but for you, it will be a bit difficult if you have 20 things to connect together, that will be really difficult. But I wanted you to go through this exercise. And this is the very reason why we are discussing it now, because th now this is giving you an architectural view and the way to it should be implemented. So even in the real environment, we do it step by step because real environment is connected to the production environment and production environment is making money for the company. So even in production environment, I will create one by one and make sure I will take time on this only one switch and make sure this is, is exactly what I need to do. Once this is created, then I move on to the next one. Once this is done, maybe the first switch might take one hour to create, delete it, recreate, delete, create, re delete, create. But once this is perfect, then move on to the next one and then move on to the next one. So this is what we do in production as well. We don't create everything at one. So this is, this is the first problem that I see in all of your uh, architectures. 
Okay, so in order to do this, so I'm just gonna take a picture of this and uh, just for our understanding, let's say I'm just focusing on one of the part of this. So I'm just gonna take this here. I just need to create this one in the real environment. So I'm gonna take it here. So this is what I'm focusing on at the moment, that this is what I need to create. So this is my ESXi host. So in the ESXi host, the very first thing that I will do, I need two network cards for this switch. So uh, for, for, this, uh, for, for this one, for this server, I will bring a network card. So uh, let me bring a network card here. The quick question. Yeah, please go ahead. Like uh, the, when you add uh, physical adapters, there is a like uh, built-in switch which is switch zero. So do we need to use it, uh, or uh, we don't need to use it? Uh, we switch zero most of the time. Uh, we don't use. Uh, we create uh, our own switch. So just one switch. So in the real environment, you don't have five switches in one server. Uh, this is just for understanding purposes. Uh, uh, there, there might be two or three switches, one switch for production network and another switch for the uh, dev test, uh, test and dev network. Uh, but your question going back, do we use vSwitch zero? Yes, that is based on the architecture. If your company is using vSwitch zero, they will use it. Otherwise, they will create their own switch and then attach VMs there. Thank you. Okay, so guys here, in order to do this architecture, first of all, by default, we know that, guys, by default, we know that there is one ESXi host with one network card. There is not, there, there, is, there are no other network cards other than that. So in order to create this configuration, I need at least two network cards. So for that, I will go into ESXi setting and I will add, two more network cards. So, I mean, at the moment, we know that this network card is attached to vSwitch zero. So vSwitch zero by default is using this one network card. But if I need to create another switch, I need two more network cards. So, I mean, right in the beginning of that exercise, you can add 10 network cards all together and then use them. But since we are going step by step, so in order to create this, first of all, I add two physical network cards, then restart the CSXI host. So this is one thing is done. I have two network cards. Secondly, I have now, I need to create a virtual switch inside, uh, inside ESXi host. So for that, I will go into the virtual switch. So on the ESXi host, we will go to the networking and create a vSwitch zero that is known as management because the vSwitch name is management. So we will name it as, uh, let's say, management. So this is second task that is completed. So we added the network cards and restarted the ESXi host. Second, we created a vSwitch zero. And third, now we will attach these two network cards that, that we added by default, as soon as you attach, create a switch, there is an option to add uplinks, just like we just did in uh, in, in just uh, this lab that we did. So you attach this and then now, so you have the switch ready, you have the network cards ready. The last thing is add, add this port group. So this is a port group. So the last thing, which is, so this is third. And the fourth one is create a port group. The port group will be this and attach the port group. So once you create a port group in the same option, there is that you need to attach it here. So this will create a port group inside. So that port group name will be management. Okay. So guys, I know that this is, uh, this, this is all new to us. And uh, uh, so just go slow on this, maybe in this week uh, before the next lecture, try to do this again. Uh, just look at this diagram and do it one by one. I think most of you understand uh, what we are doing here. Uh, most of you understand what we are doing here in this. Uh, so the main idea is to understand the, the, the concepts that how these are all connected. Ashish, yes, you may ask a question. Sorry, sorry, the, that was from the last time actually. Okay, okay, good. Um, so guys here, uh, so, so this is now basic 
networking. This is now basic networking. Now, one more thing that we need to understand uh, today is uh, that in the management group, in the management port group, there are four ports that we need to understand. There are four ports. Uh, there are there is a four. There are four four purpose of a management port group. So I'm gonna go here uh, onto this second whiteboard. So guys, keep on remembering that the physical server, our favorite physical server is uh, DL380. This is how DL380 looks like. Uh, DL380 is a server, is one of the server that is uh, that is used in most of the networks. Uh, so for that reason, I'm just keep on saying DL380. And DL380 is the server on which we install ESXi host. It's the same server where we install Hyper-V as well. Uh, so for for that reason, we just need to remember DL380 as a server. Uh, so here, guys, a management port group. Management port group has uh, we can create four types of management ports inside. Now, when we work, when we were working with the port group. So when we were working, oops, okay, uh, that was power of attorney. Okay, sorry, that was not part of the lecture. <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay, so what we are doing here, guys, uh, so what we are doing here, yes. Uh, so I need to delete this. How is everyone doing now, guys? How is everyone doing, guys? Uh, Please type yes in the chat window or whatever your feelings are, angry, tired, great, whatever it is. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, good, 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 good. Thank you. Uh, Okay, thank you. Uh, Abdullah, next time we will feel happy when you when everyone is able to complete the exercise. Uh, guys, it is a complex technology. And just like we learned last time, complex is what they pay for. Okay, and it's it's not difficult. I mean, once we do step by step, it will be easy. Okay, so, to, so now, guys, we talked about two types of support group before we can, uh, I mean, there will be advanced network concepts later on in this training. Uh, there is a full chapter on this, but, but as part of the basic understanding, when we work with port groups, there are two types of port groups that we have seen. Uh, there is one called VM network port group, VM network port group. Anyone remembers what is the main purpose of VM network port group? If you know, uh, please uh, type it in the chat window. VM network port group is? Is uh, used to uh, connect VMs only. Exactly. VM network port group is the port group that only connects to the, uh, that only connects to what? That is That only connects to VMs. Yes. So the main purpose of VM network port group is to connect to VMs. So right here, I have a ESXi host. In this ESXi host, I, I have a vSwitch inside. And that vSwitch has, by default, vSwitch 0 has two port groups inside. So one port group is basically for VM network port group, which is right here. And in this, you can have many any ports inside, so thousands of ports inside. Uh, whereas we have a management port group, which is a second port group, which is this one, and that has only one port, and that port is known as management port. With that port, we are connected to. We are so that 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 is called a management port group. That is called a management port. And the, what is the name of this port, guys? Name of this port is VM kernel port. VM kernel port. VM kernel port uh, basically serves four purposes. So VM there, there are four purposes for VM kernel port. And these four purposes are number one. Uh, so there are four purposes for, so VM network, VM network port group, we know that as soon as you create VM number one, uh, it will get a port from VM network. So that's one. You create a second VM, it will create, so second VM will get a port from VM network. VMs will never get a port 
from the management network. Management board is the main function of the management board is to provide management uh, for ESXi host. So this is where we are connected to. So now there are three other purposes of this uh, VM uh, management port. So there are, so management port, management uh, port has four purpose in general. So one is uh, one is that, uh, so here I'm just using the whiteboard everyone, later on I'll add that to the Word document as well. So don't worry about that. But here focus on uh, what the four purposes. One purpose that we already know the management pur purpose is management network, management traffic. So uh, the way we connect to ESXi host, the way we connect to ESXi host, this is called all management uh, and that is done through VM kernel port. So the name of the port is VM kernel port. VM kernel port has four functions. One function is management traffic. So all the management traffic will happen from this. Second one is uh, storage traffic. So st for storage traffic, uh, we will use management port. For storage traffic, we will never use the VM port. So whenever we use a storage, so for now, just remember storage traffic or the iSCSI traffic. iSCSI traffic. Guys, why am I saying traffic to this? Because the main purpose of the port is to uh, is for communication. So it's a communication between this VM and the switch. So this is what port does. So that is what port. So so first purpose of this port is management traffic. The way we are connected to ESXi host is the management port. Second purpose of the same management port is is storage traffic. And third purpose is vMotion traffic. So later on, when we work with vMotion, uh, vMotion is a technology in which a live VM can move from this ESXi host to another ESXi host. So, uh, so, so currently at this point, we are, we, uh, we, we are not going into uh, that discussion. What actually, there is a full chapter on vMotion. So for, don't worry about that vMotion. But at the moment, I do want you to uh, remember that, that vMotion is a concept in which this VM that is working on this, you can move it live VM from here to here without users disconnected. So their users will never be disconnected. Guys, this is why it is known as V motion, virtual motion. Uh, so at this point, I just want you to remember, I mean, is this, I mean, is this, uh, you, you think it's an excellent feature? Yes, guys, it is an excellent, excellent feature. I mean, uh, how, how beautiful is that, that you move your running laptop from one place to another? I mean, most of the time you will have to close the laptop, you put it in the back and then go to the college or your work and, and in the work, you will have to restart the laptop. But guys, laptop, since I'm the only user connected, if you even shut down the laptop, that's fine. But guys, this server is, is a live server. This server is basically all your users are connected to this server. Maybe to this VM, there are 10,000 users connected. So if you have to move it from this server to this server, uh, if and if you have to disconnect it even for one minute, that will be a loss of huge revenue. So this this uh, vMotion technology is a technology where you move this live VM from this ESXi host to this ESXi host without 10,000 users disconnected. So that's the magic of vMotion. So vMotion traffic is all handled with management port. So there is a full chapter on vMotion, but here I just want you to have this general understanding next time when I ask you, what is vMotion? So you just say, I mean, you can relate to the you can relate it to the other motions that we know in the real environment and uh, I, I don't know what other motions i mean i know of many other motions but uh, yes you can relate it to that motion and motion uh, guys v motion so we are focusing on v motion at the moment it's a technology in which a live vm moves from one esxi host to another ESXi host, that's that technology. And that traffic is handled by management board. vMotion is not a technology that is handled by, uh, that is handled by VM network board. So the fourth one and the last one that I want you to remember is FT traffic, FT traffic. FT is, uh, FT traffic, FT traffic is a fault tolerant, fault tolerance traffic. So this traffic is also, so vMotion traffic, and FT traffic. 
these four and what is ft ft is a fault tolerant traffic there is a full chapter on this don't worry about that we will go through that later on uh, but uh, but today i want you to remember that that management port can handle four type of traffic one is management traffic second one is storage uh, iscsi traffic third one is v motion traffic and fourth one is ft traffic so these four type of network traffic can be handled from management port these four type of network traffic cannot be handled from uh, uh, from vm network port group so navid is asking a question please uh, one liner for ft ft stands for fault tolerant traffic ft stands for fault tolerant but here i cannot give you more ex explanation on this uh, because uh, we can uh, so it, it's a fault tolerant traffic basically it's a traffic in which this vm if you if let's say uh, okay so just a quick very quick high level understanding is ft is some ft is called a fault tolerant traffic so let's say this vm is the most important vm uh, this vm is the most important vm uh, of your uh, of your network. network and this vm is uh, 100000 users connected to this uh, let's say if a ebay website and it's a holiday season everyone is buying stuff and this is the most important vm now you cannot even wait for you cannot just rely on v motion for this i mean v motion is it can move from one place to another maybe it has a cluster or a high availability guys ft is a technology in which we create a clone of this vm so we will create a clone of this vm right here on another esx i host and this is an exact clone of this vm so this is called fault tolerant vm so the main idea is uh, that if this vm goes down for any reason for any reason hardware reason on an esxi host networking issue storage issue any issue if this goes down users won't be disconnected user will be automatically connected to this one so exactly like failover cluster so ft is exactly like failover cluster option so but in order to do ft you need lot of resources and there is a full chapter on this so don't worry about that at the moment but guys so management this management port group can handle four type of traffic now how do you remember it how do you remember it in the real life guys think of uh, think of uh, esxi host as a city think of exi esxi host as a city so let's say uh, there is a city huge big city called esxi host okay and in esxi host in order so esxi host has two big highways esxi host has two big highways so one highway is just for vm traffic and the other highway is just for the management traffic so the other highway is just for the management traffic so this other highway is going into esxi host and going out of esxi host this is management traffic so so this highway vm network is that port group that is only for vms so this one will be vm so all of the vms are connected here so all of the vms are connected to vm network port group and all of the management traffic is connected to uh, the management port group so this is the management port group and which is called vm kernel so this highway name is vm kernel uh, highway or the management port highway and in this highway four type of traffic can uh, can can pass through one is the management traffic so this is the first one i'm going to call this m and the second one is uh, second one is basically uh, your ft traffic which is fault tolerant traffic and the third one is uh, the storage traffic so the third one is storage traffic and the fourth one is ft traffic so fourth one will be ft traffic in this so four traffic so guys i just at the moment i just want you to remember that management port can handle how many types of traffic guys four type of traffic guys type in the chat window four so how many so management port group can handle how many types of traffic four type of traffic and what are the four type of traffic number one management traffic number two storage iscsi traffic number three v motion traffic number four is ft traffic uh, guys take only take only take only take only one minute uh, maybe half of the minute and type all the four in the chat window type all the four things uh, management storage v motion ft management guys type that i know smarter people would let other type and then copy paste everyone else uh, so uh, so if you want to do that guys that won't be honest you need to type it so so type uh, all the four types of traffic selim that was a good joke you said four type 
uh, oh, yes, four types. I want you to type the name of the traffic. Just quickly take uh, uh, 20 seconds and type management, number two, storage, number three, vMotion, FT. In all the VMware interviews, guys, in all the VMware interview, this is an interview question. They will ask you uh, uh, management port. What type of traffic can be handled with management port? And your answer is management traffic, storage traffic, vMotion traffic, and FT. Okay, Alamgir, you may ask a question. Oh, yes, sir. I was uh, typing in the meantime. So you said uh, in the FT uh, fault tolerance, uh, it's a kind of clone. So is it clone of the full uh, ESI? Or like uh, just a VM. Just, just uh, some important things like maybe. No, no, uh, no, 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 just a VM, not the complete, uh, it's not a clone of the ESXi host, it's the clone of the VM, you know, there are VMs inside, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's a complete clone of that VM, complete clone. Okay. Complete, okay, thank you. Yes, okay. So, excellent guys, thank you for writing in the chat window, very good, and uh, so this is very, very important. Yes, go ahead, please. So, um, you know, uh, the, the portal just keeps on logging out. Uh, would that affect the functionality of the machine anytime or uh, like do we always have to have it on? No, it's fine. The, the, the portal is just timing out. So that's for security purposes. It doesn't affect anything in the ESXi host. So all VMs are working fine. Everything is working fine. It's just that if you're not attending the ESXi host and you're, it should automatically log you off for security reasons. Oh, okay, makes sense. So we don't really have to have it on all the time, right? No, 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 no. Okay. Actually, actually, the uh, the rule is, and, and all the company policies are that if you're not in front of your computer, everything should be logged out. Especially vCenter, especially all these things, you cannot just leave them out of your sight. Okay, makes sense. And okay. in many companies, uh, there is a very, very strict rule that if you leave your uh, your Outlook, uh, I mean your desktop, on and you're not in front of your screen you there will be a warning given to you so many companies have this uh, this as well that you cannot leave your and your manager would just uh, if you, your manager sees that that your computer is on and you're not there especially being a system admin and, and a cloud admin they can call an explanation <clears throat> they might give you a warning a few times uh, so that you know you cannot cloud you right <laughs> yeah the, yeah for sure i mean something used to, happened uh, you basically yeah, put the screen upside down uh, whenever anybody's screen <laughs> used to be like open, basically. We should just always make it upside down. So when they come back, they're like, oh my God, like, you know, most of them really don't know much, right? So exactly, exactly, exactly. That's true. Uh, Alamgir, you have a question? Sorry, sorry, sir. Yeah, can you uh, recap uh, management traffic, please, if you don't mind? Uh, yes, yes, quickly. It's right here. And, 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 and I'm going to just... Okay, I have to have to create a new document and okay, that's fine. I'll just create a new document right here. Um, yes, management traffic. Uh, so, uh, I mean, how do you remember management traffic? The management traffic, you just need to remember in this manner that all the switches can have two different type of port groups. Uh, so one port group, all the, so here, just let me write it. So all the switches can have two different type of port group. port groups and one is called VM network and the other one is called management port group. So management port group. And management, so VM network port group is easy that it can handle can only handle VM traffic, whereas management port group can handle four type of traffic.
And those four types of traffic, number one, management traffic. Number two, uh, storage iSCSI traffic. Number three, vMotion traffic. And number four is FT traffic. Now that means that whenever we need to configure storage traffic, whenever we need to, we need to create a management port. Whenever we need to configure vMotion traffic, we need to create a management port. Whenever we need to create a FT traffic, we need to create a FT port. So that's what it is. Okay, everyone. Um, Alamgir, you have a question? Uh, and, uh, sorry, sir. sir. I just uh, I think. Okay. Sir, okay. Sir, no. sir uh, my question is: for each of the four functionalities we have just uh, discussed earlier, we have to create ports within the management port. That means port within a port. Uh, no, in the management group, we need to create another port. Okay. okay. So okay. let me quickly show you that. So I show it to you. Uh, so I am going to log into ESXi host and I am going to go to the management port. So here, I, when I go into the management port, so this is my port group. So remember that I need to create, I can create four type of traffic in the management network. So in the management network, this is my management network. So on vSwitch zero, so this is my management network on vSwitch zero. If I go into this management network here, uh, currently it has only one port active. Currently it has only one port active, which it shows, which it shows right here. Guys, don't worry. I know that this is a new technology for everyone. And this, uh, this uh, portal can be overwhelming at some time. Uh, I mean, when you're looking at it, when you're working on it, so, uh, so a bit by bit, you will be able to understand and work with this. So I am in the management network and it has only one port. And if I click on this management network uh, port group, and remember this is a port group. So we, so what, what did we said in the document that all switches have two different type of port groups. One port group is known as VM network port group. The second one is management network port group. So I am right here within management network port group. So this is a port group and I'm under port group groups and this is management network port group and if i click on edit settings this one port is only assigned network traffic at the moment so here i can see that there that here this is a network port group in this and in here i have if i can go into security actually these are the simple uh, things that we just discussed uh, but here uh, where can i see that i can see that i can See that within the virtual switch actually. So within the virtual switch, I can go into vSwitch zero. vSwitch zero will show me that what is in the management port. So if I go right here, here is the management port and the current and port name is VM kernel port group. So this is a VM kernel port group. And if I click on edit here, for this port group, I probably this will give me exactly the same thing. Uh, there is this uh, port group here. And if I click on the switch here, so this is management traffic. This is VM kernel port. And if I go down here, here it shows me this is fault tolerant. Logging is disabled. Management is enabled. So remember four types of traffic. One is vMotion. This is vMotion is enabled. And you can have uh, vSAN as, as uh, iSCSI traffic. So these are two, these both are storage traffic. This is for vMotion. This is replication, replication also for vMotion. Just like I said, we haven't covered vMotion and uh, storage at the moment. So later on, there is a chapter where we will discuss more. But these are the services that we that management port can handle at the moment. This management port can only handle one traffic that is enabled, which is known as management traffic. Let's say on the same port, I need to enable vMotion. So for that, I need to enable this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this port here. And for that, I need to go to edit settings. And within edit settings of VM kernel, one more time, let's, how did I went there? So maybe some of you might be thinking that, how did I went there? All you need to do, go into vSwitch zero. 
going to be switch zero. And let's say I need to add another type of traffic in the management port. So I am just going here on the management network. So on vSwitch zero on the management network, just click on this VM kernel port. So when you click on the VM kernel port here, it will take you to the setting of this port. And remember that on this port, there can be four types of traffic. At the moment, it is only handling management traffic. vMotion traffic is not enabled on this. In order to enable that traffic, and first of all, on this port here, you can see everything is disabled other than management port traffic. Not even FT is enabled. This is called FT. So the one that I was saying that FT, FT is fault tolerance logging. So that is uh, here and this is vMotion, this is vSAN, these are storage related, these are vMotion, so basically four type of traffic. So let's say if I need to enable vMotion on this, if I need to enable vMotion on this, all I need to do is go to edit settings and within edit settings, uh, once I'm there, I can just enable vMotion traffic on this. So here you can see in services, it's saying, okay, so what do you want to have enabled? You can enable management. Management is already enabled. The rest of them is not enabled. So the next thing that I wanted to enable is vMotion. If you also wanted to enable FT on this, that can be added. If you also wanted to do the storage uh, stuff, replication, NFC replication, all, uh, you can enable that. But at the moment, we are just enabling vMotion and management management on the management port traffic. So I'm going to save that. So now here in this recent task, you can see that it is, it is happening now. It is enabling vMotion. And when I come back here and refresh the screen, so as soon as I refresh the screen, vMotion is enabled as well. So uh, we need to remember that four types of major traffic that can be handled through management port. And one more time, I'm, I am going to go there and you go with me as well if you're already here so that you know next time if I say, just go enable vMotion traffic on, on, on a management port. So uh, you need to go to vSwitch zero or whatever switch because you can have management port management port group on the other uh, switches as well but at the moment we're just looking at v switch zero so go to v switch zero and on v switch zero just click on vm kernel port and the interview question is what is vm kernel port guys always remember kernel 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 Kernel, this is not the kernel in army. This is a kernel in this CSXI host, but it exactly acts like an army kernel. Uh, why? Because without this port, you're disconnected from this. You are, you cannot manage the ESX. This ESXi host is all management. You're managing this ESXi host from this window server, from this port. So if this port is not available, then it means that you, you, you have no connection to ESXi host. This is exactly what happened with uh, ESXi 2, number 2, when, uh, with Alamgir server. If vSwitch 0 is dead, if, we switch, if, if this vSwitch is dead, it means that the management is dead as well. So uh, there might be some, some way to bring that back. But guys, before, remember, if this happens in the real environment and uh, you tell your manage manager or your management that vSwitch 0 is dead, uh, then uh, they won't give you a chance to fix it. Somebody else will fix it. And you can guess why you won't be given that chance to fix it. Uh, I mean, the best guess would get the first prize. Why won't you get a chance to fix this? Anyone? Because they want you to go home and rest. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You'll be fired. You won't have the chance to fix it because, uh, so this is, I mean, so, I mean, in the training environment, it's fine, guys. Always remember in the real environment, we don't delete, we never delete anything. We never delete anything. The most we do is disable something. So in Active Directory, we never delete a user. In, in, in normal servers, we never delete a file or folder. On a server, in the real environment, we never delete everything. So this is a thumb rule that we need to remember. We always disable something or maybe change permission or something. And that is only when we have a written permission in the email. So if you get receive an email, always if your manager is verbally asking you guys, I had that one manager, Chinese manager, long, long time back, and he tried to, uh, I mean, uh, uh, frame me of something. And he asked me to do something. And in the meeting, literally, he, uh, you know, he, he said that he never said that. I mean, and I never had that proof. 
Uh, so after that, I learned that everything needs to be black and white whatsoever. Uh, whatever they said, you can humbly ask them, you know, just send me a one liner and I'll do it. So you need to have that proof. Uh, so guys, uh, there is no verbal communication in, in the real environment. If somebody is doing, and first of all, delete, you need to have 10 emails. Ask him 10 times, uh, maybe uh, maybe go to the next level and, and, and maybe discuss it to other colleagues. Never delete anything in the real environment. Okay. So what is the time now, everyone? Yes, I was just looking at it and break. Let's take a quick break here. And right after the break, we will start a new topic. So guys, uh, freshen up break. It's a uh, it's a uh, five minutes break, not a ten minutes break. Uh, let's take just five minutes break. Freshen up break.
Hello, welcome back after the break, everyone. <clears throat> okay so <clears throat> so with this uh guys uh we now start understanding uh networking esxi host and uh, here is our v center guys for next uh, for the next week please remember that v center needs to be ready uh, we'll be working on v center and v center is right here on my other server now I'll share you share with you my experience with vCenter guys and uh, uh, with vCenter I had so much time spent and I, I, I said that in the in the in my message and on the WhatsApp group as well and uh, the problem that I was having that somehow I was not able to install vCenter from a domain controller this is my domain controller and in the real environment basically we don't use domain controller for anything domain controller is for authentication and we don't install anything on a domain controller so what I did at the end after six times installation of vCenter you can think of I mean if you work with this vCenter vCSA you might have seen the frustration and waiting uh, for vCenter to be first stage and the second stage and going on. So I did that at least five or six times. I waited for hours and hours and, and created a video. And you can see the frustration in my other, in my two last videos as well. Uh, I mean, the vCenter was not going through the main controller. And I'm not saying that it's not possible. Maybe uh, some of you might have already installed a domain controller vCenter through a domain controller and sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't but but in my case it only happened from this server from this fourth server that I installed as a member server and then from this member server when I installed the vCenter it it just uh, went fine and now I have a vCenter ready so for the next lecture please remember to have the vCenter ready in your uh, environment So uh, will it make it any difference because we have installed vCenter on uh, domain controller? We were following no, your no. videos. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. So if it is installed on a domain controller, I'm just saying that vCenter should be ready. So if it is ready from that, it's fine. Great, thank you. Okay, so guys, uh, today now we need to start understanding the storage of. Uh, so we did have a basic understanding of uh, uh, networking within ESXi host. So within ESXi host, we know that uh, from the ESXi host we can do the networking here. And now today we need to understand the storage of ESXi host. So storage of ESXi host, we also have a basic understanding uh, about uh, the storage. Now in storage, we all know uh, that storage starts from a disk, just like like uh, just like a uh, networking starts from a network card so you have a network card then you connect that network card to a switch then switches has switch has a port group and with the port group vms are connected so this is how everything uh, that, that in networking is connected same same way uh, in the storage storage starts from a disk so first of all how many disks do you have on your esxi host so, uh, so so by default there is only one disk available in, in esxi host then we keep on adding more and more disk uh, in esxi host so two concepts that we already know that in ESXi host, in ESXi host, disk, first we add a disk, then we create a data store. So when we create a data store, then it becomes, uh, then it becomes a usable disk or then in other way, in other words, in it, it's exactly the same thing, just like in, in this server. Uh, remember that on server 2016, when you add a new disk, you can go to a file and storage and within file and storage, when you add a new disk, it appears in the disk section. So whatever appears in the disk section, that is known as a raw disk. And when you create a volume, then it then it is then it becomes usable, but then it is available in the volume section. So volume means that it is available. So same concept works in ESXi host. In ESXi host, raw disk is known as just a normal device. So when you create when you add a raw disk, it will appear in these devices. And when it is formatted, then it will appear in data store. So in data store, I have uh, 
uh, data store one, data store two, which is, uh, so one, so first one is capacity 32 GB, the th second one is 99 GB. So in the devices, I can see that there is there is two more disks available. One disk is 100 GB, the other disk is 40 GB. So which means that I have two raw disks here that are not in use at the moment. So so the, if, if, if the disk is not is shown in the data store, it means that the disk is not in use. So this is the basic understanding uh, that we uh, that we already know. Let's understand some more uh, concepts of uh, data storage. So uh, understanding data storage concepts is right here. So uh, in the e in ESXi host, what happens is in ESXi host, when the disk is formatted, it is known as a data store. Uh, so it is known as a data store right here. So data store one and data store two. And, and from this data store, your VMs will be connected to. So this is a basic uh, understanding. And later on, we will be creating, we'll, we, we will be adding external storage. Guys, please type yes in the chat window. Please type yes in the chat uh, window. Uh, Abdullah, I just, uh, I saw your request and I'm seeing your request. Sorry, I was not able to respond to that request. I will add you to the WhatsApp group, yes. So I will add you to the WhatsApp group at the end of this lecture. Uh, so right here, uh, we have uh, everyone, uh, we have uh, storage. Uh, so storage starts from a disk, just like networking starts from a network card one more time. I mean, if we can remember that in this manner, it will be much, much, uh, it will be much, much better. So here uh, I have, so, uh, so networking in networking starts from a network card, network card, so a network card and network card connected to a uh, network card connected to a physical server. This is our DL380, DL380. And then, then on DL380, we have a switch inside that switch has a management port inside that management port is basically connected to the physical network card. So physical network card, connected to uh, management port and all the VMs that are inside. So these are VMs are inside that are connected to the VM port. So this is, I mean, this is our basic understanding. I'll keep on repeating that till the end of this training, uh, the basics. Uh, so this is basic and also our storage starts from a disk. So all the storage starts from a raw disk. So we add a raw disk to a server. So this is a raw disk. Uh, this is, let's say, 40 GB disk I just added uh, to a server. It goes into the storage part of ESXi host. And this is my ESXi host. And on the ESXi host, it goes into the devices. You can find this raw disk. So the new disk that we add is, on, is known as a raw disk. Raw disk meaning that the disk has nothing. You'll still have to format this disk. And this appears under the storage. So you go into the storage. And in the storage in devices, you can find this raw disk and then when you format this disk then this becomes a data store so data store is that uh, concept so raw disk devices and data store uh, secondly guys on the storage level uh, storage level and we had discussed that on the in mcsa training as well that there are these different storage types available so first of all now we are going into a little bit more advanced level uh, in storage so in general in general storage are of two types number one block level storage and second one file level storage block level storage and a file level storage always first of all remember that block Block level storage is always fast. So this is fast and this is slow as compared to block level storage. So this is file level storage is slow, block level storage is fast. And since it is fast, it is expensive. So since it is fast, it is always, it will always be expensive. So block level storage will always be X expensive and this is uh, this is cheaper since it is slower now so so block level storage there are two types of storage there is something called das and there is something called nas das and nas das is uh, if you can remember from the server's training das is direct attached storage and this is san is storage area network this is storage area network this is das is direct attached storage and direct attached storage is uh, direct uh, direct attached storage so always remember that this is a this is a local storage that is connected to this is a local storage that is connected to uh, the server itself so this is direct attached storage and san is storage area 
a network it is a it is a storage that is connected uh, that is connected uh, through the network so this is the network storage so i'm going to just say this is network storage and this is direct local storage so this is local storage local in server so local in server so this is local in server uh, in our laptops we have das can we have uh, can we have san on a laptop yes san can be connected to a network but das is always remember direct attached storage direct attached storage in other words it's a server inside a server when you add a new disk when you add a new disk inside a server so by default server has a disk called c drive remember when you install server 2016 it creates a c drive when you install esxi host it has a local disk uh, it has a local disk and when you add more disk so just like in our case we added number of different disks here so we have added these disks together so we have uh, we have uh, we have esxi host uh, added so we have this disk added here uh, in this in this disk we have this is extra this is internal disk so always remember whenever we talk about das das is always direct attached storage and direct attached storage are of these type there is uh, there is scsi storage there is sata drive there is sas drive and there is ssd drives as well so there is uh, there is ssd drive as well these are all known as internal attached storage where a second type of storage is san which is uh, which is uh, storage Area network and storage area network is fiber uh, connected fiber channel. Uh, this is known as fiber channel uh, SAN storage, fiber channel on you know, on Ethernet or iSCSI storage. So in SAN there are three different type of storage available as well. For a file level uh, storage, there are two different type of storage. There is SMB and NFS. What was the second one? F uh, FCOE. Which one was that? So FC is fiber channel. So this is fiber channel. So this is fiber channel, and this is also fiber channel, but this is over Ethernet. Fiber channel okay, so over like Ethernet. So like hardwired connection, hardwired, yes. and this could be over like Wi-Fi or whatever. Well, I mean, this could be anywhere in the network, essentially, like even from home or whatever. Right? Yes, exactly. This is <laughs> okay. inside the network. This is inside the network, and okay. I will go into more detail. But here, just okay, remember okay. that this is a block level storage. Block level storage is always faster than file level storage, and this is file level storage is basically SMB storage, which is a Microsoft based file share. So this is Microsoft sh sharing. This is Microsoft sharing, and this one is Linux sharing. This is Linux file share. So this is uh, NAS is network attached storage. So this is N and NAS is network attached storage. This is DAS, and these are different type of storage. And I'm I'm going to go into that. So let me just quickly go through the slides here, and then we can create notes uh, in the Word uh, document. And at the same time, we will uh, try to see uh, how we can configure this these storage in the lab. Okay. So first of all, let's go through. Uh, let's go through the slides here. So types of storage protocols, number one, block level storage and file level storage. This is just file sharing. This is just file sharing technology. It is always slower than the block level storage. Block level storage has two types, DAS, which is the di direct attached storage, SAN, it is storage area network, and NAS, it is network attached storage so block level in general you can just remember the block level and file level block level is faster and file level is slower sir quick question please go ahead uh, i noticed in some uh, of the jobs uh, they require das san and nas experts is this what we are doing right now or uh yes to so... be expert of these three we have to have a different certification or further depth knowledge Exactly, exactly, yes. So when in the job requirement, they, they say specifically uh, uh, that they need uh, somebody specialist on block level and file level storage and SAN level storage, those are separate certification. Those are separate cert certification uh, that is not a, a cloud admin or a system admin. So those are separate certification. What we do here, we just we as a, a VMware admin as a cloud admin, I need to have a good understanding of this, but I will never configure all this. There are separate people who are who are responsible for this. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, you're most welcome. So here block level and file level storage. Guys, FC is connected in this manner. So when we talked about uh, fiber channel storage, fiber channel storage is connected in this manner. Uh, so here, uh, first of all, what are we trying to understand? Fiber channel storage. Fiber channel storage has its own network and fiber channel storage have its own uh, fiber channel switch and it has its own uh, that is connected with ESXi host. And this is the storage uh, where the disks are connected from so it has a storage sp stands for storage processor it has fc switch which is fiber channel switch and then that is connected to hpa host bus adopter and that is connected to esxi host now uh, with this a slide what, what are we trying to understand we are trying to understand the technology of fiber channel so first of all uh, here i just wanted to say uh, that fiber channel storage first of all fc stands for fiber and this is f-i-b-r-e fiber channel storage fiber channel Fiber channel storage, guys, first of all, always remember that fiber channel storage is the most expensive storage technology. Uh, I mean, if it comes to storage, it is the most expensive storage technology, a smallest fiber channel. And this box that you see in blue, this box, it refers to fiber channel storage. So that, that box it refers to SAN storage. That box refers to a SAN storage box. Now in this box, basically, uh, what, what, what is this box uh, having? This box is having the disks inside. So this has a stack of disks inside. So this box has one, two, three, four, five, five disks inside. So it has five disks and, and based on these five disks, we can connect these disks to ESXi host and give it to them. Now, this is exactly like how many of you at home has USB drive? So my question to you is how many of you have USB drive? Uh, please type that in the chat window. If you have a USB drive, if you ever had used an, a USB drive, and I think most of you will reply yes. We have all used a USB drive. And what is common in a USB drive, everyone? USB drive is, might be a stick USB, or it might be uh, it might be a, a 3.5 or 2.5 inch drive. So a black color drive that you can buy it from anywhere. It is a Western digital uh, drive that you can uh, two terabyte drive, and and sometime it is one terabyte drive or 500 GB uh, drive as well. These drives are available everywhere in Canada computers or any computer store. So these are USB drives. But what is in these drives, guys? Main thing that in these drives that we pay for is the disk. So basically, it's the disk capacity that we are paying for. So this, this disk that you bought is 1 TB inside. And basically, you're paying for the disk. So outer cover can be anything. Outer cover can be either a 2.5 disk drive, or it can be a small stick USB. So this stick USB can be 10 GB in size, 32 GB in size. Nowadays, there are 64 GB disks are available. So basically, what is what you're paying for is the disk inside. So guys, this is exactly the case. Fiber channel storage or iSCSI storage. In all of them, outer box and their technology is different, but they are all selling the disks. They are all selling the disk. So if I'm saying the company has is using FC, guys, I need your attention. I need your attention. Please, when I say, when I say that when I need your attention, I need your attention, which means that please clear out all the distractions uh, around us, uh, uh, kids, uh, TV, uh, BV, uh, sorry, uh, wife, wife, uh, uh, all types of destruction, everyone. Uh, I mean, uh, this is for me as well. I keep on removing my distractions as well. So when I am in this uh, training, I ask my kids to please stay away from this room and, and stuff like that. I know, uh, I mean, if so, I need your attention, everyone. Because uh, this is an important concept. You can remember it right from the class, right from here in the class, and you will be able to say the word that I'm saying in the interviews. So please try to remember because we are trying to make it very, very simple. Okay. Uh, Homen, are we online? Homen is online or not online? Okay. 
Human is connected, but not responding right from the beginning and here. And everyone is responding. Okay, that's fine. I will speak to human later on. Uh, guys, if, uh, uh, I mean, very important. So attentive. Uh, I said, uh, yes, I can see a lot of yes here. Everyone is attentive. This is very important. So guys, so today what we are trying to understand storage and right starting from the storage, the very first storage technology that today I need to understand is FC. Now I'm, I've started understanding with USB. What is USB? It's just a stick. It's just a USB stick, but inside it, it has a storage. Uh, the other 2.5 Western digital disk, and I, I'm sure most of us, uh, most of us has uh, this uh, Western digital and we have a disk here. So mostly it is disk. Thank you, Alamgir, for, uh, uh, so it might be at work. Uh, so here guys, and then here we have this USB one, we have disk number one. And so today I'm understanding FC. So in FC, the, 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 the resemblance or the, uh, or the relationship between USB and the, and the SAN storage, you can remember that from outer side, the technology that makes it faster is called, is this box. So this box, uh, okay, so this box is equal to the box of this USB stick drive. So USB stick drive has a smaller stick type of structure. This is a big sandbox in the real environment. So in the box, uh, what they are selling are number of disks inside. So SAN is a technology. Number one, this box that complete SAN, it is sold as a complete infrastructure. So when you buy a SAN, when you buy a SAN, uh, which is basically known as uh, FC, and SAN is of two types, guys. SAN is of two types. So here I'm going to say SAN is of two types. One is called iSCSI SAN, and the other one is called FC SAN. So for now, what we are trying to understand, FC SAN. And I want to have this FC SAN on your fingertips right after this. So for now, we are understanding FC SAN. We are not working on iSCSI SAN. So I want you to remember that FC SAN, FC SAN, which is this one, and which is this box here, FC SAN is the most expensive storage at the moment. So this is the First of all, this is the most expensive storage. Now, why is it most expensive uh, expensive storage, guys? Uh, because FCSAN will give you uh, a guaranteed speed. Whatever they are saying, it will be a guaranteed speed. So for example, a USB drive, there is no speed actually. Uh, this, uh, this USB drive is a very, very slow drive as compared to, as compared to any fast disk. But FCSAN, they say that they will, if they are saying that they are, uh, that this complete box will provide you 2 GB speed. Now, what is the meaning of 2 GB? 2 GB means that in, so since this ESXi host needs the disk from this box. So this ESXi host is getting, so, so forget about all this at the moment. Uh, why, we, why we bought this SAN? Because we need a fast speed, fast disk connected to ESXi host. So, I mean, your question might be, why, why are we even using this? Why can't we just add this to ESXi host here? Guys, the reason is that in order to provide high availability, your storage should be sitting outside the ESXi host. Uh, in order to provide high availability, Availability. Now, uh, remember this point that why do we need to provide this external storage? Because let's say if this ESXi host goes down, if it goes down, it is crashed for any reason, the disk will go down as well. So for that reason, we have to have all the storage, all the VM sitting in this external storage so that another ESXi host can connect to this external storage and can provide high availability. So for high availability, first top requirement is that your VMs are sitting outside outside ESXi host. And one of the option is FC SAN. And if you if your company can afford it, they will buy FC SAN for this. And all the medium to large size companies, they all have SAN storage. So SAN storage, first of all, it is a box in here. And it is the most expensive storage. And they provide 2 GB speed, meaning that when you access this storage from this ESXi host, it will be 2 GB speed. Guys, 2 GB speed is a huge speed. And they provide speeds of this this type. So FC SAN, uh, this uh, SAN storage can provide you 2 GB speed, 
it can provide you 4 GB speed, it can provide you 8 GB speed, it can also provide you 10 GB speed. So, I mean, uh, the, the 10 GB speed, obviously, the more speed you have, the more expensive it will be. So, I, I would say that uh, the ebay.com website or amazon.com website or microsoft.com website, all these sites where people are buying and selling and all these banking website, they all, they all must be using 10 GB SAN. 10 GB SAN, because they don't care about the money. They are, they are making all the money from their, uh, the, from their product and services and their customers are very, very important. So all of your customers are sitting right here. So this customer is basically connected to one of the VMs here and this VM is stored in this storage. So, uh, and since it is a banking server, let's say it's a TD Bank server or Bank of America server. And so there are, there are how many users might be. So maybe with this VM, there might be 10,000 people connected. There might be 10,000 people connected to this VM and this VM is sitting on this storage. So this speed has to be very, very fast. So I'm sure all these banks are using 10 GB SAN, which is very, very expensive. So guys, one more time, let's understand. And I'll take your question in a moment. I'll take, keep writing your question. Uh, just park the question in, in the chat window. I'll take your question. Let's understand the concept. Here, just give me 10, 15 minutes here. Uh, so everyone, uh, number one, it is a sand storage. This blue box represents a sand storage and it is the most expensive storage, number one. Uh, number two, it is the most uh, speedy storage as well. It is the fast storage as well. So number one, it is expensive uh, because it is fast. And how does it provide the fast speed? It provides the fast speed because it has its own infrastructure. It does not rely on the normal network. It does not rely on the normal network. I mean, it is exactly like, uh, let's say you're, you're, going from, uh, you're going from your home, you're going from your home to the airport. Let's say you're going from your home to the airport. And if you're going from your home uh, your, to the airport, there are two ways to go. Number one, you can take a public route. You can, uh, you can uh, get onto a highway uh, or a freeway or maybe a motorway or maybe a, a tall uh, road. Uh, so you can, you can go this way where all the public is traveling. So this is public is traveling. Guys, in, uh, in Middle East, I've seen, and maybe probably might be in the West, I've not seen that in, uh, in, in Canada or Australia. But in Middle East, there is a special road all the way from the palace right to the airport. So that special road has its own infrastructure. It has it, it has its own highway that is only for the royal family, and they travel from their their palace directly to the airport. Uh, probably that palace is uh, that the most uh, the near to the airport. Uh, probably from that uh, palace, at least from the not from maybe the palace in in other cities. But there is a there is a special road for this. And why did they made this type of uh, arrangement? Because so that they can get there in a fast manner. But the important thing that here I want to, the point I wanted to make that they have their own infrastructure. So when this road has its own infrastructure, its own bridges, its own way of, there are no signals on this, then it, they can guarantee a fast, speedy traffic. This is what they do in the sand storage. In sand storage, they do not rely on physical switches. They do not rely on physical networking or RJ45 cable. They provide their own network. They provide completely their own network. So when you buy a SAN switch, when you buy a SAN storage, they will provide you uh, HBAs. HBA is the network card that connects to ESXi host. So meaning when you work with SAN, the not normal network card won't work for you. You'll have to get HBA and HBA stands for host bus adopter. Host bus adopter. And uh, so host bus adopter, uh, basically HBA is the card. I mean, more than my writing here, guys, you can remember it from the picture. HBA is a network adopter card that is specially designed for only SAN. This card, HBA, will only work with SAN. It cannot even work with iSCSI. It cannot work with anything. So first of all, always remember this example that, uh, that SAN guarantees this speed because they provide their own infrastructure. And this is why it is expensive too. Because if you buy a SAN the, in the package, uh, and, and, and I can tell you based on my experience, the smallest SAN will be anywhere from $10,000 and goes up. Uh, 
So uh, uh, expensive sand can be two million dollar as well. So this box can start from the minimum. It can, I mean, second hand. Yes, you can find a second hand sand, two thousand dollar, four thousand dollar. But a new smallest sand can be uh, ten thousand dollar in price. Ten thousand uh, dollar in price, and then it goes up and up. So, guys, the why is it expensive? Because they give their own infrastructure. So, when you buy a SAN, they will give you an HBA to be connected to ESXi host number one. Then they provide their own switch, which is FC switch. So they won't rely on the physical network switch. So they have their own switch, and then on the SAN, it has its own storage processor. So this is a CPU of storage. So as you can see. that they provided everything and then it is inside it is connected to a disk so uh, so so for one reason your question might be that why is it so expensive it is expensive because they they are providing their complete infrastructure this is number 1 and why they are providing their infrastructure because they need to guarantee this speed i mean uh, so this is example uh, you can also understand with another example that at home rogers is saying that we are giving you 50 mb internet speed but at times and the peak hours like in the evening and night especially in the especially in the in in the weekend you don't get even more than uh, 20 mb speed and why not 20 mb because this 50 mb is shared among other uh, your neighborhood uh, to to other connections as well uh, so they are not providing a fixed speed so in sand when they are saying that they give you 2 gb they are providing 2 gb uh, in on average on average it is said 2 gb network can provide like Uh, uh, 80% of the speed, but because there is some lost, uh, the, there is some signal because of the signal and because of other, uh, uh, other uh, because of other uh, uh, what do you call other reasons in ESXi host maybe CPU is busy, memory is busy, it might not be exactly 2 GB, but it is it is very near to 2 GB. <clears throat> okay, so one more time, guys. uh today we are talking about learning about storage and the first storage technology today we are learning is known as fc storage fc stands for fiber channel storage number 1 number 2 is it is the most expensive storage number 2 number 3 is that it is the most fastest storage available it is the it, 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 and it is the most reliable storage available uh, so fast storage it is expensive and it comes in four different speeds it is going up to 100 gb 100 gb is not available at the moment 10 gb is available uh, though so 2 4 8 10 gb is available 100 gb going to 100 gb uh, so the main idea is that it has its own infrastructure it does not rely on anything else so remember remember the royal family is going to their airport using their own infrastructure they don't rely on the public uh, network uh, signals lights police check and this and that they and they have their own airport and everything as well so uh, so these are the reason now let's take questions on this so first question sir, from I have questions. yes please go ahead sir this fc storage uh, looks like it it does it does work only in the fiber environment but is this compatible with the cat 6 or not uh no it's not compatible with cat 6 it has its own switch its own networking yes okay great thanks are these like those small little switches that they actually go is like a four port switch uh, they almost look like a cat but it's just like a small uh, four port switch is that the switch uh, that that it is no no it's a full fledged switch it's a full fledged like a physical switch but it's specially designed for just storage switch So, so companies like the... just gaming companies like who have games and like actual storage online like Amazon obviously is going to be using um, like SAN right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah, for sure, all these companies are using these uh, SAN switches. Okay. So HB, so HB adapters, sir. Uh, how do they connect with the ESXi server, sir? Because ESXi, uh, I think, is a VMware uh, installed on a server. Yes. So how do so, they connect with the server? So, so, so yes. So HBA are just like network adopters. You can just buy when you get this complete package. Uh, you will connect that package, that network card, just like any other network card to the ESXi. Yeah, I mean it's a DL three eighty server. You open the server, attach the HBA, and connect it to SAN. So that's what it is. Yes, it can be attached to ESXi host. Uh, sir, what is the disadvantage of this FC storage? Um, 
FC storage, the only disadvantage is that it, it is expensive. Smaller companies cannot afford it. And plus, uh, secondly, only specialized people can configure it. So it's not configured. I mean, uh, so um, I have never configured uh, FC storage. Yes, I did some troubleshooting on that, but this is not my responsibility. If I would have been, uh, if I would have been interested in this technology, I would have got certified in that and then went into that. But that's just one uh, one side of uh, technology. So uh, advantage is number one, it is expensive. Number two is only specialized people can manage it. Sir, can you go back to your slide? Yes, I'm just I'm just no. bringing out bringing out just this one uh, picture here so no, that I, I can put a, it in my slide. Uh, thing, uh, not my, so, uh, like you know how you said, obviously all companies are moving to data centers and stuff like that. So, um, won't this be there in the data center as well, like over there? Uh, Yes. So since many of the companies are moving into cloud, yes. So in, in normal companies won't be using FC, normal companies, right. but, but in, in cloud data center, it is heavily used. Right, right. So that's what I was saying. So essentially, if anything goes down, you just basically call, call the technician anyway. So they'll already have like uh, experts in whatever storage or whatever you really need for your architecture or whatever you really have for your architecture. There will be like people assigned to your uh, services, right? Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, okay. So basically, uh, you know, obviously you have, let's say you have a SAN and, uh, you know, you have a couple of, like, you have two towers of servers, right? And you're running a very basic, like, website company, let's just say, right? And right. Uh, the only thing is that you're just storing, uh, like, raw data of, uh, you know, like, websites and stuff like that on your server. So, you know, if anything does go down, God forbid, you're basically going to call the people who are in the data center and be like, Exactly. You know, needed, exactly. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That, that's the case for sure. So would it be like more expensive? Uh, like you know, obviously, if you have these services as well. Uh, yes, it will be expensive, and just like I said, a, a medium to large size company that are making good, that are they are in the in the market. They have uh, and their products are being sold, and they have a lot of money. They can easily afford even the support for one year or three year, and they can uh, support right. the services of those specialists. Yes. Right. Right. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Excellent. And Navid asked a question. Now we know a positive point about this FC storage that is very fast and it is expensive, but it's the disadvantage. Uh, okay. So yeah, I answered that. Uh, so guys here, uh, we can see FC storage. Now, as compared to FC storage, uh, it, the, the real switch would look like this. So right here, this is here, you can see a switch. So uh, this is storage area network, SAN, and here is FC right here. And these two boxes that you see right here, bottom, these are the, these are the SAN storage boxes. So this is SAN, SAN storage one, and there are a lot of, uh, uh, you can see uh, these uh, disks here. So these are all the disks. So here you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven disks here, seven here, seven here, seven here. So basically this box is providing the complete storage. This box is connected to FC and FC is connected to the server. Uh, so this is what uh, this is what SAN is. Now let's see the biggest difference between SAN uh, FC and SAN iSCSI. Guide SAN iSCSI is exactly like the same box. Here you can see this is a big box of iSCSI and iSCSI is also a, a box like this, but iSCSI is uh, cheaper com compared to FC. Uh, the reason why iSCSI is cheaper, uh, I mean, both are serving, serving the same purpose. Uh, what is the purpose? The purpose is to provide disk to the server. So for this server, you need to provide a disk. iSCSI is also providing the disk. The only uh, the difference is that iSCSI doesn't have its own infrastructure. iSCSI is connected to your TCP IP infrastructure. So it is relying on your infrastructure. You don't, for iSCSI, you don't have to have FC switch. You don't have to have HBA. You don't have to have SP, which is storage processor. So iSCSI, uh, for iSCSI, uh, you, you you just need uh, a box, a iSCSI box, and connect it to your TCP IP network. So now that that uh, now that can for that you will have to rely on your TCP IP network. Okay, so that's the big difference between iSCSI and FC. FC has its own infrastructure with on which it will 
guarantee a speed of 2 GB, 4 GB, 8 GB, and 10 GB? Uh, and how do you differentiate on all that, guys? When you buy an FC, you need to. Uh, uh, they will ask you what type of speed do you need on FC? Because the price tag is different on all of them. Uh, this this might be cheaper. This might be the most expensive. So if your company is interested in 8 GB, then they'll have to pay 8 GB, and this all infrastructure will be 8 GB infrastructure. I have a question, sir. Yes, please go ahead. How do we calculate, or how do we suggest that we need a 4 GB uh, speed of the disk or 8 GB speed of the disk? What is the formula? Excellent. Not the formula, but how can we uh, find out? Yes. So that depends on your uh, requirement. That depends on your requirement. Why are you buying a storage for your organization? So most of the time in this infrastructure, in this uh, virtual infrastructure or a cloud infrastructure, uh, everything relies on what application you're running in this environment. Uh, so for example, if uh, so for example in here, if I can go to my ESXi host, basically I've set up an ESXi host for my environment, but the main thing in this environment is the vms that are that are hosted on this environment so if i go to my virtual machine here within virtual machine i can see only one uh, virtual machine for now it's just showing zero it will show it will so here i have five virtual machines on this so based on my requirement and how do i know that how much storage or speed i need so guys to answer that that depends on that what is the application and what is the requirement of that application for example uh, my website department the website department comes to me saying that you know i need a vm with a very fast storage and your question will be that why do you need a vm with a very fast storage because then they will tell you you know we have a website where 1 million users will be connected to there are 1 million users so based on that requirement i'm just giving you an idea that if 1 million users are to connect to this vm it means this vm needs to be uh, on a fast storage as compared to a vm where only 10 users are connected so i mean this is one of those formulas and in order to in order to uh, in order to uh, basically decide that if you need a san or you need a ice kazi i mean cheaper option is ice kazi ice ice kazi you can get it for 2000 san you can get it for 10000 so basically this all depends on the application requirement and since your application your website team is saying no we need a fast storage then your next question do you have a budget so and then it goes to the management management will say yes we are getting from this website we are already earning 100000 dollars so spending 10000 dollars on this san is not a big thing so this is how we decide that what type of san is required it will never be your and my decision not my decision not your decision it will be a decision of the management and the application department who are looking for this storage they need to convince the management you know my application is making 100000 dollars so we can spend 10000 on the storage so i can I ask you a question sir please go ahead so you said that the san storage comes with its own accessories uh, that means uh, fc switches and uh, all the accessories right. but uh, like for example so td bank it has an application on an exi server and the data storage must be very very far away and it doesn't uh, like it doesn't work on the pc the ip then how is it possible that they are going to provide such a big mileage of uh, interest uh, can, can you repeat your question uh, please uh, uh, faz uh, cl stay close to the mic cuz your voice okay. dropped that's why i not able to understand the question can you hear me now properly sir uh, you're still a bit far maybe you can just uh, make it yes you can go ahead you can go ahead ask your question uh, my question is sir you yes. said that san storage comes with its own accessories like switches and everything uh, but uh, but uh, it also doesn't work on the tcp ip network so in case of like td bank application for example it is hosted on e esxi uh, server yes and but the storage must be very far away from the uh, main esxi server so how does it like san uh, uh, caters for such a big uh, distance no 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 Yes. So, guys, everyone, the question is: uh, Let's say a VM is hosted on ESXi host, and the storage is uh, on the same network somewhere else. How does it work? Uh, so, in order to answer that, 
uh, Faz and everyone, whenever we install SAN, we install SAN close to where it is required. So if ES if SAN is required in 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 Mississauga branch or a Brampton branch or a, or a New York branch, then we will make sure that the SAN is in the next rack to the server, so it's not far from the servers where it is required. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, Abdullah asked a question. So FC storage can be connected to outside world means uh, user machine lands uses a media converter. Hmm. Uh, I don't understand that question. Abdullah, can you repeat your question? Uh, I mean, over the... So what I'm saying, uh, uh, like uh, if we have a FC storage yeah. in our computer room, not a data center, a mid-size mid, uh, mid company, and they want to install a FC storage because they need, they need a, a speed, still they can use it uh, for the external users. Uh, there will be like a, a switch that can convert FC signals into standard tp link signals or uh, uh, TCAP IP where you can connect your RJ45. So that uh, device that converts this is called a media converter mm -hmm. that converts from FC fiber channels to Ethernet. RJ45. Ethernet, yes. Ethernet. Yes, yes. So that's a, that's a bit cheaper option, yes. So that's a bit cheaper option, and which is exactly in the next slide right here, uh, which is known as FCOE. FCOE. FCOE, guys, is uh, FCOE is basically a technology that where you don't need an FC switch, uh, where you where your your company wants to go uh, with a cheaper solution. It will still be a SAN, but it can work on Ethernet network or TCP/IP network. So it will be still a SAN storage. So it's a SAN storage, but you can instead of using the FC switch, you will use a FCOE switch. And FCOE switch is basically a switch on Ethernet. It it is connected to it is connected to is uh, it is connected to normal ESXi uh, normal ESXi host on a normal TCP/IP network. So this will be a TCP/IP network, uh, which is basically what uh, Abdullah just mentioned, which is a media a media converter. So guys, in this first slide, we have seen that FC is a fiber channel storage. Number one, please write that in your notes, guys, because I have a lot of things to cover here. I will maybe I will try to write them in my notes, but please keep on writing in your notes here and i will share the slide as well uh, with you sir i want to ask one thing so this fc is like fiber uh, channel right so sir i i would need to clear one thing it is supporting or it is compatible for only fiber optics like because nowadays sir, telecommunication is moving to fiber optics right so You're right. the speed is the speed is going to fiber so fiber exactly. definitely provide maximum speed one giga or two giga. So that's why I'm asking, sir, this fiber is only like fiber sub compatible or like copper as well? No, no, it's only fiber. When it says fiber, it's fiber. It's not copper. And this iSCSI, sir? The iSCSI is all copper. Yes, iSCSI. Okay is copper, uh, which is okay. the normal network cable. So this is the non normal network cable. Fiber channel, what they are saying in, on internet that it will everything will be on fiber. It will yeah. be fiber, but it's not a true fiber, remember? Because uh, yeah. uh, they are providing fiber between exchange to exchange. So one Rogers exchange to another Rogers exchange or one uh, ISP to another ISP. But to your home, it is still a copper. Uh, you can still get that fiber channel to your home as well. But if you're, if you're paying to pay a, a lot of amount for the infrastructure, uh, but it is it is kind of a fi fiber, but it's not a pure fiber. Okay, uh, guys, the second type of technology that we need to remember right here, which is FCO FCOE, which is cheaper solution than this, all the features of fiber are there. So what are the features that I want you to remember, uh, guys, I want you to remember uh, these, fe these features here. So I'm going to just uh, uh, number them. Number one, fiber FC stands for fiber channel, number one. Uh, number two, it is the most expensive uh, storage available. Number three, uh, it is the most fast storage available. Uh, fast and reliable and they, it comes in four different speeds it, it is also going into 100 gb later on for now it is not available uh, but four speeds are available uh, which is 2 gb 4 gb 8 gb and it has its own infrastructure so number five is infrastructure
it is number five is it's had it has its own infrastructure and you can remember uh, with the example of home and airport uh, this example and within number six we need to remember that host bus adopter are the adopter that are connected to esxi host so this is number six you need to remember host bus adopter connect to esxi host or in real dl380 so you bought a new server and you need fc so fc it uh, comes with a complete package. It will be a big box in which you have the storage with the disk. And also it has HPAs. Uh, you can take out the HPAs connect here and also the switch, FC switch uh, is the one that is connected in between the storage. And here you have SP, SPA, this is storage processor. So SP is a storage processor, just like laptop has a CPU central processor in storage has its own processor. So all the, uh, all the, every, all the traffic is going through FC to SP1 and SP2. Guys, a little cheaper solution is FCOE. So if your company is not uh, willing to pay uh, for the FC storage and, H and HPA will be definitely there, but FCOE can connect to HPA and it can connect to, it can connect to a normal NIC as well. Here you can see it's a normal NIC where the normal storage is connected. Co connected. So this is known as uh, this is known as FCOE, which is fiber channel over Ethernet. This is fiber channel over ethernet. Over ethernet meaning that it is over normal network. So that is a cheaper uh, solution and it is connected to CNA. CNA is our converged network adopter. Converged network adopter, which is this, it can work with both of the traffic. It can it can handle HBA traffic and it can also handle, uh, it can also handle the normal NIC traffic as well. So it can work with both type of solution. Guys, the third type of uh, storage is iSCSI storage. Guys, iSCSI storage, as I said, it is a block level storage. Uh, so it is so iSCSI storage, number one, it's a block level storage. So block level storage, always remember uh, that it is fast. So block level storage. Number one, it is a block level storage. Number two, it is a fast storage. Uh, number three, it is cheaper than uh, FC. So cheaper than FC. It is cheaper than FC. And remember why FC was expensive. Why uh, Navid? Uh, why SP is uh, uh, FC is expensive, Navid? Yeah, FC is expensive because uh, it uh, gives the guaranteed advertised speed. Excellent. And second reason? Second reason that uh, uh, it does not rely on the normal network. Uh, it has, it has its, its own, infrastructure. own infrastructure. Very good, very good. Yes. So it's and it, it needs uh, right. Go ahead. And okay. it needs the uh, uh, HBA host uh, bus adopter, and the uh, HBA uh, is an adopter which is designed to connect uh, with this FC storage. Very good, very good, everyone. So I want you to take a picture of this in your mind, guys. Uh, save that in your photo memory, and this is how I remember it, guys. This is how I remember it. Yes, I went through the books as well. Uh, as being a trainer, I need to go through the books as well. But here, guys, this is the main essence of this, what, what we need to remember. It has its own, Abdullah says it has its own uh, infrastructure. If you can remember these seven points here, guys, you can talk about FC in an interview. You can talk about, and this is how much they need to uh, know. Uh, would they ask you how to install FC? No, they, they will never ask you because they will ask that question to, uh, to uh, a storage specialist who is SANS specialist. And SANS specialists are highly paid maybe uh, down the line, maybe in uh, four or five years, uh, you want to become a storage specialist. And uh, uh, actually it's a very narrow path. And if somebody is a storage specialist, uh, only being a storage specialist doesn't work nowadays but nowadays you have to be a uh, you know an expert in in multiple technologies uh, at the same time so this is why we are learning servers we are learning vmware this is why we are learning the cloud technology so that we can have everything uh, in place but here uh, you need to remember this and i want you to take a moment and put it in your photo memory photo memory how do you put it on your photo memory draw this on your rough page so draw if you can once draw this on your rough page make an esxi host make 
make a two uh, two squares uh, one call hba that connects to fc and that connects to sp and that is the storage and inside you have disks here if you can draw that on a rough page and you can say that out loud for a moment uh, and that's it guys it stores in your photo memory and remember remember day after tomorrow one day after explain it to someone call someone from your group and guys please don't mind when you when you call each other because we are all learning we need to learn that we need to uh, you know uh, we need to uh, compete uh, the the it professionals guys call them for two seconds okay this cannot be done in two seconds maybe 10 seconds maybe 15 seconds explain fc so i'm going to explain fc number one esxi host connect to hpa hpa connects to fc fc connects to uh, sp and what where are you getting all this information not my from my uh, verbal guys you're getting this from your photo memory so remember Photo memory is an excellent, excellent memory that you use for interviews, for discussions, for even implementation and everything. So photo memory, you can uh, you can uh, make your photo memory faster by drawing, drawing, draw it, draw it and remember it. OK. Yes, go ahead. Anyone wants to say anything? OK. So guys, the next one is FC OE. The only difference between FC and OE, OE means that this FC is SAN. It is still a SAN, but it will be connected over. If it, it is still be FC SAN, but it will be connected over normal network, over normal network. So always remember ethernet is also, is always known as normal network. Uh, whereas the third type of storage is iSCSI storage. Guys, iSCSI storage, guys, the, always remember whenever the word storage comes, guys, even in interviews, everything. So in the back of your mind, you should start remembering the USB stick. So USB stick and the main thing in the USB stick is this uh, is this Tera. Uh, you, you bought this USB stick for, uh, for, uh, for this, right? So we are buying the USB stick for our children. We are buying this for ourselves. We are buying this for everyone. And why do we need to buy a USB stick? Because we basically we need to store something in the USB stick. So when we buy a iSCSI storage, it is still in a box, number one. And here are the disks that are available uh, where we need to store our VM. So essentially in VMware, we are, we are buying these boxes to store our ESXi host. So here, uh, what happens is that this uh, iSCSI storage, number one, it is, it is connected over normal IP switches. So normal physical switches. Here, there is no FC switch. Uh, so right here, you can see that uh, here, uh, so basically ESXi host, we need to have ESXi iSCSI initiator. So iSCSI initiator is the adopter, is the normal network adopter where we connect to IP switch, normal switch, and that connects to the storage array in the back, uh, which is the, these disks available. Disk number one, disk number two, disk number three, disk number four, disk number five. And uh, here uh, is, uh, in iSCSI, you can also have HBAs as well. You can also have HBAs and it can, and, and this iSCSI storage have SPA as well, uh, but this HBA is specially for iSCSI. So iSCSI, the main difference is that it is cheaper because it doesn't have its own infrastructure. But guys, cheaper doesn't mean that it's it's really cheaper. Nowadays, even iSCSI companies are selling uh, high-speed storage as well. So even uh, iSCSI comes in all these different, it can come as one GB speed, and it can come as 10 GB speed as well. And it is going 100 GB as well. So they are providing, and iSCSI can be as expensive as $50,000. So uh, yes, iSCSI has also developed a technology where they can give more speed, but they can still not compete with FC. No storage can compete with FC. FC is the most expensive, fastest, reliable storage, but companies can also use iSCSI. Most of the time, the use of FC in the enterprise, in enterprise world is enterprise tech, uh, companies, whereas iSCSI is mostly used for the test dev environment or not the production environment, or maybe an expensive iSCSI can be used in in the production in the in, in in production environment as well, but the main difference is both are SAN storage. So SAN is of two types, guys. How many types? Two types, uh, which is number one FC, number two is iSCSI. So if you can just rough on your rough pad, just uh, just uh, write that uh, SAN is of two types, FC and iSCSI. Uh, FC is fast. 
So just like that, FC is fast. IFCSI is slower, but it's not as slower as, I mean, as slower than uh, FC. Uh, here it comes in four different speed, four, uh, two, four, eight, 10. Uh, whereas this comes as one GB, 10 GB and going 100 GB. So these are different speeds there. And then this is expensive. So here I'm gonna say this is expensive. This is uh, cheaper. Uh, this is uh, has its own infrastructure. I'm, I'm just giving you uh, um, a way to remember this. Just keep on writing this. Even after the lecture, maybe tomorrow after the lecture, just pick up a rough page and start writing this. Just start writing that whatever in your mind and that will become more and more and more and more stronger whenever they ask you a question in an interview and maybe you're not prepared in that interview. For, first of all, in interviews, we need to go prepared. So we will prepare each and every word of job description and we will be 100% prepared for the interview. But in case you forgot to remember that and they ask you, what is the difference between what is FC? Guys, click. At that point, that photo should come back to your mind and you need to remember that, uh, you need to remember this picture. If you can remember this picture, uh, guys, and you made it a few times, you explain it to some time and you made somebody an expert of this picture, guys, you will never, ever, ever forget that. Um, so, so this is iSCSI technology, and in uh, in ESXi host, we will use iSCSI technology. <coughs> sir, uh, please go ahead. Sir, FC uh, protocol is uh, TCP/IP or not? No, FC has its own protocol. Protocol, right? Yes, it has okay. its own protocol. It it doesn't rely on TCP/IP. That's good. So, which means uh, that it, okay. it doesn't have IP address, which means it doesn't have IP address. It has its own unique numbering. Okay. Even it's a, 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 it's a SCSI under the FC storage? Yes, even in ISC, uh, ISCSI is using TCP IP network, the normal network, yeah. but yeah. even ISCSI doesn't have uh, IP addresses. So, if you guys remember, from failover cluster lab that we did in the servers. In failover cluster lab, you need to have iSCSI initiator configured. So on one side, you need to configure iSCSI target, and the other side, you need to configure iSCSI initiator. iSCSI initiator is always the server side. And this is where the storage is. This is always iSCSI target. This is always refer refers to as this is iSCSI target and this is iSCSI initiator. So whenever the word iSCSI target comes, that means it is referring to this box. In other words, this is referring referring to that USB. Uh, so basically, this is the box is referred to as iSCSI target and iSCSI initiator is always on the server side. Uh, sir, there are two boxes at the top, which is SPA and SPB. Sir, what is that? So SP stands for storage processor. So SP stands for storage. So this is just a CPU of storage. So for storage, in order to make it faster, they installed CPUs inside, especially for storage, just like a laptop has a CPU, right? So SP stands for storage processor. So this is storage processor A. This is storage mm -hmm. processor B. Uh, I'm still confused that uh, um, like uh, this uh, this FC storage or FCOE or iSCSI, um, these are not physical uh, disks or these are virtual disks. No, no, these are physical. This is a physical storage. So this one, this box is a physical box that you paid for. You paid $10,000 and you receive this complete, uh, just like a server, it's a separate device, complete separate device. Okay. Now we are talking about a virtual machine and now the disk is physical. Uh, I'm confused about the connectivity of it. Okay, very good. Yes. So first of all, we will get this uh, device from, we receive it from IBM. Let's say this is IBM storage and you paid and then you receive it after two weeks. So in two weeks you received it, a big box in your office, you will open the box and now you are ready to connect. So on your ESXi host, you will, con you will connect HBA and HBA will be connected to a switch and switch will be connected to this. Now 
in the VMs, first of all, we need to configure that. And this will be available in ESXi as a data store. So it will be available as a data store. And in that data store, we'll be storing VMs. So mm -hmm. in ESXi host, remember that we need to create a data store. So mm -hmm. once we when once we add the disk here, then we convert it into data store, and then we add VMs to this. Correct. Okay. So in this whole diagram, uh, only the disk is a physical device, and rest is all virtual. Rest is all virtual. Yes. So here we have a VM that is sitting in this disk. Actually, the disk is sitting. Uh, the VM is sitting here in this disk. So basically, okay. sir, so, sir, sir, basically, sir, yeah. yes, Alamgir, go ahead. So basically, everything is uh, like uh, being designed or uh, set up in the data centers. But our job is to just uh, go on uh, HTTP on the login and uh, get everything like any like storage from uh, EXI host, right? But exactly. Coming from the uh, data, data storage. Yes, yes. Basically, our job is to manage this ESXi host. We are sitting on this layer. In the back end, the disks are coming from the storage. So storage, the disks are coming the here. Data center, right? So yes. Everything is being set in data center. Exactly, exactly. So, so just again, by oh, sorry, FC uh, and ISPG would have their own uh, numbering system, right? No IP addresses. It won't, it won't. There are no okay. IP addresses in this. It has a unique numbering, yes. Okay. So, sir, so, in other words, we have to uh, arrange for this space from the FC area, and then we have to uh, make it into data store. Uh, yes, yes. So in the so we have so what was your question? Where do we have to arrange a space? No, no, no. My my understanding or my perception uh, or my question is like all what we have to do as a uh, VMware administrator is like we have to arrange for data uh, spaces or data stores like we added this space in the SSI server virtually, and then we have to convert it into data store and then. Uh, then we then we need to install VM in the data store. Yes, that is our job. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Sir, you, sir, I you have a question. Want yes. to tell, yeah, yeah, sir. Um, I want to relate this question with any internet providing company, let's say Rogers or Bell. So that thing I might be will clear my mind. Sir, for example, if the fiber option. If, uh, because now everyone is in transmission of fiber optics. So once it will be completely work or not, sir? Okay, I lost your voice. Uh, can you repeat your question? Uh, 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 so you're connected from your phone. Uh, try reconnecting again. Try uh, but, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Zishan, Zishan, uh, one quick question. So you're connected yes, from yes. your phone. Yes, yes. You're connected from your phone. Uh, yes, sir. Opening Zoom through Zoom, or you're dialing into Zoom. Because on the phone you can install Zoom application and then connect from there, or you can dial the local number in Zoom. So in the meantime, when uh... Uh, Zishan Bhai comes. I can can I ask you a question? Please, please go ahead. Yes, sir. So, like once you are on ESXi host, so if you need a storage, so you need to <clears throat> like uh, request for a storage or uh, it will be available. You have to ask uh, at how much uh, like uh, storage you need. Then you exactly, have to exactly. The data center. Exactly. Yes. So once you're in ESXi host and let's say I need 20 GB of storage from this. So I would send an email to the storage admin. So there is a special admin of this storage and I will send in an email. You know, I need uh, I need uh, 20 GB of disk. Can you uh, provide it to me? So that guy will go into the storage, create a 20 GB disk and then provide it to you. Once it is provided to you, you can create a data store and install VMs inside. Yes, this is how it is. Okay, thank you. Okay. I have but a question, sir. Yes, please go ahead. 
sir, uh, being a system admin, what will be our role in configuring it or uh, in terms of the infrastructure or for the storage? Uh, no role. We are not configuring anything on the storage. The storage will already be there configured by, and even if it is a new storage, let's say you're, mm -hmm. com you're working in a medium sized company okay, so and they don't have, a, a, and they don't have a storage team. So even in that case, whoever, whatever company you're buying storage from, they will send a storage specialist that he will configure it for you and give it to you. And if any, if later on, if there is any problem, you don't have to troubleshoot, this will be, this, okay. you will open a call, uh, call them just like we call Rogers or our internet provider and tell them, you know, my disk is not available. What can I do? So most of the time they will provide you support over the phone. If it is not fixed, then they should have, they should visit you. This is why they are, they are charging $10,000. So they okay. will provide you everything. Okay. Uh, second question is what kind of uh, lab are we going to do uh, in terms of this storage? Yes. So we will be configuring uh, iSCSI storage in our network and in iSCSI storage, we will use a virtual storage uh, appliance that is known as open filer and we will connect that SAN. So it will be completely acts as a SAN and, uh, and then we will connect. So for now we're not going into the lab, but to answer your question, yes, we, we will be using iSCSI storage. Wonderful. Uh, uh, one more last thing, sir. If you can go back to that uh, picture for FCOE. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is the one. Give me one quick minute. Sorry about that. Okay. So, no problem. So, guys, here. Okay. So right here, this is F -E, uh, F -C -O -E. but at the moment, guys, I want you to just remember uh, these concepts here. iSCSI is a SAN storage as well. And here we have disks. Disks are, uh, disks are connected to ESXi host and where we store our VMs. Now, a fourth type of storage is known as NFS storage. NFS storage is just a normal file share. NFS storage is a normal file share. In NFS, NFS stands for network file share, and it, it's the slowest form of shared storage. I mean, it is not as fast as uh, it is not as fast as SAN storage. Uh, it is NFS stands for network file share. So this I will is. Not show my... Sorry. Yeah, we lost your voice, but now it's okay. Okay, okay. So, sir, and sir I, sir, I have a question. Yes, please go ahead. Are we doing any lab today? Um, I don't think so. No. Sir, the reason I have a request, I have a project today at five a.m. Okay. Okay. Because we are going to shut down all the server for one of the site. So, okay. That's fine. So can That's I leave? fine. Can I leave? Yes, yes. Because you I can... want to sleep early and then I have to wait. wait okay, okay, that's fine. So today we don't have a lab. I, we just need to understand the storage technology, but please uh, go through the video, please. I will, Sir, I, will. Uh, I okay, have a question you. here. Yes, thank please you, go sir. ahead. Um, You're most welcome. Sir, so ESXi host is a virtual, uh, virtual uh, machine, right? No, ESXi host is a physical server. Oh, okay, then okay, sorry. Okay. But, but we will log in uh, HTTP, right? So once we install ESXi host, then from the other computer, from Windows computer, yeah. we log in, we connect to this through the, through HTTP, yes. So, yeah, so like this whole setup, like ESXi host and everything, that will be uh, kind of, uh, uh, they will be in the data centers? Uh, yes, ESXi host will be in the data center and you will be in the office. You will connect to this uh, uh, HTTP and then it connects you to ESXi host. Okay, yes. sir. Yeah, that was my confusion that if these are physical, like uh, and Nick is physical and uh, LAN switch is physical. So this must be also physical, right? So ESXi host too. So yes, yes, it is. It is. Yes. Okay. Guys, the fourth type of storage is NFS storage and NFS storage is basically a slower form of storage. Uh, I don't think NFS storage is used anywhere other than maybe a test lab. Even the test lab, we don't use NFS storage. It is a slower 
It is a slower storage. And as you can see, this, this doesn't have anything special. It is just a simple uh, physical switch connected to network cards. Uh, so here you have a storage box in which there are disks available in the disk that is connected to your ESXi host. It's just a, a storage. So if you don't have SAN, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have iSCSI, if you don't have that uh, fast storage available, then you can still make use of NFS storage. So NFS is still a shared storage. It can be used. It's not used anywhere, but this is a fourth type of storage where you can store VMs. Okay. Uh, so what I want to say is uh, basically uh, on what I think, uh, maybe I'm not wrong, uh, but please clear my confusion that ISKZ storage is the uh, most uh, common uh, like storage solution, uh, which is being used in most of the companies because it is cheap, but it is absolutely fast on the other hand. Uh, what do you um, think? Nanmay, no. can you go back to the other uh, NFS storage? Uh, yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, so uh, so to answer that, everyone, the question is, uh, iSCSI is is it is iSCSI the most common type of storage used in all of the companies because it's cheaper and uh, it is serving the purpose? Uh, to answer that, no. Uh, most of the companies are using FC storage or the SAN storage FC uh, because it is using most of the uh, most of the companies are using because it is faster, it's reliable, and medium to large size companies since they are making revenue on top of their applications, they don't risk uh, getting a, a, a slower storage. So then uh, that goes to maybe your next question. Then then where is iSCSI used? iSCSI is mostly used in the dev and test environment, not in the mm -hmm. real. In production environment, it will always be. Not, it, so FCOC won't be here. I mean, this is one option, just like NFS, not used anywhere. But mostly it will be FC this type of storage and secondly the second number is iSCSI mm. and uh, this iSCSI has basically some sort of risk factor uh, that is why FC is the most common storage solution uh, which most of the companies uh, are using exactly exactly Okay. Thank you. So, so right here in this table, we can see the storage uh, product uh, protocol comparison. Here we have all these different type of storage. VMFS. VMFS is that data store where VMs are stored. Uh, remember that when we create our data store, when we create a data store, uh, the disk is formatted with VMFS. And we learned that I think in the uh, previous lecture and previous to previous lecture, VMFS stands for VM file system. VM file system where everything is, and VM file system. Uh, all these types of all these storage are support they, they support VM uh, VMFS storage also DAS can be used and also vSphere virtual volumes can be used and vSAN so this is just a table for uh, for information there is nothing important here uh, consideration when choosing the best storage whenever you need to choose between iSCSI storage and you need to choose between the FC storage these are the things that we uh, we uh, uh, we uh, we go through uh, like capacity how much capacity do you need? What should be the performance? Uh, what about the existing application requirement? If it is a web application or if it is a SQL application, resiliency, uh, then reliability. So these are many, many different features where, where we need to uh, choose a storage. I mean, the very basic idea, the very basic idea behind choosing a storage is what I already uh, mentioned. And I think one of you asked the question, that how we how do we choose from that now that is chosen from sitting with the application team and then also that what is the budget for your company so the topmost storage is fc second number is iSCSI. now data store uh, we already know uh, what is a data store anyone can define what is a data store data store is nothing but a disk drive Right. Data store is nothing but a formatted disk drive, right? So when we add a new disk, it is it is it becomes a device. So it's a normal device. It becomes a normal device. And when you uh, basically uh, format that device, it becomes a data store. And in that data store, VMs are stored. So you create a first VM, it will be stored in the data store. You create a second VM, it will be stored in the data store. So by definition, it is a data store is a logical uh, storage unit. Uh, you get a LUN, uh, which is a logical unit number. So LUN is logical unit number. You get a LUN from a physical uh, storage. And 
and assign it to the ESXi host and create a data store. We will go into more, a uh, little bit more depth on LUN, uh, which is logical unit number. And this, uh, this logical unit number is basically a partition of iSCSI and SAN storage. So when we configure a SAN storage here, th there we will configure this technology. But here, we need to remember data store is always a formatted disk, just like a volume in a Windows server. So types of data store, there can be all these different types of data store, VMFS data store, NFS data store, RDM data store, vSAN data store, and vVolume uh, data store uh, as well. So the most common type of data store is VMFS. Now let's see that in our lab. Let's see that. So if I go to my ESXi host, everyone, let's go to ESXi host. And whenever you are basically formatting a disk, let's say in order to have a data store inside ESXi host, uh, how do you get a, ESX, a data disk in ESXi host? First of all, you need to go to the ESXi host and within ESXi host, uh, we will add a disk. So we will add a disk into ESXi host. So uh, you will get into settings and you will add a new disk. Once you add a disk, cause I'm not adding a disk because I have to restart ESXi host. Uh, once you add a disk, you will go into data store. You will go into storage. And first of all, that disk won't be here in the data store. Why is it not here? Because it is still a raw disk and raw disk is available in devices. So here you should have a raw disk available. So let's say this disk is available and it's not formatted, this 100 GB. So 100 GB, in order to format this disk, I can create a data store. So create a new data store, you will name it. So let's say I name it as VM disk. So I'm about to create a disk where I can store my VMs inside. So VM disk one and So this is uh, VM disk one and in VM disk one, when I'm about to create, it is saying that you have 40 GB available. I think my 100 GB is already uh, formatted. This is why it's not showing the 100 GB. The 40 GB was available cause I haven't formatted it and I can choose from here. Now, would you need to format it with VMFS? So here it is asking that option that we were discussing right here, that what type of data store would you need? VMFS, NFS, or these different type of data store. So, and going back to our data store, right here, I can select from here VMFS 5 or VMFS 6. So other options are available when you have different type of disk. Let's say if the disk is coming from uh, vSAN, which is the virtual SAN, uh, which is the storage area network. Uh, it, so then you will get those options. But here, when you're partitioning it uh, a local disk, then it will be either v VMFS5 or VMFS6, we'll leave that as is. And you can further partition that into, uh, into smaller space as well. So let's say I don't want 40 GB, I need 20 GB. So I can select here, I can select here that uh, it will, sh it should give me an option. So custom and in the next screen, so no partition has been selected. So, okay, so it is already giving me that partition before that and where is it giving me the partition? So custom and custom. So this is a full disk and so this is my partition. Free space and partition. So select how would you like to partition the device? So we can go with the full disk, which is 40 GB and partition. Okay, next and no partition has been selected and it's not providing me a partition. Oh, maybe it is somewhere where I need to, it's not shown here. Hmm. Might be in device select, no? Select device, maybe uh, if you go back. 
Okay. And if I go back here, I can select the device and going to the device, there is nothing. Okay. Now it is showing me the partition. So this is full. And if I go to custom, yes, from one of these, I need to select. Yes, right here. Okay, now it can show. Okay, wow, how confusing, man. So sometimes you'll have to just go back and refresh the screen, then it would show. Here it's not showing me anything. So when I click on this, then in here, in a moment, it should, so again, it's not showing. So sometimes it's just a bit slow. Yes, it was just a bit slow. And now here you can partition this. So I can partition this to 20 GB, leave out 20 GB and next. So guys, that gives us a lesson that please do not give up and try again and again and again. Uh, so sometimes it's just a bit slow. So I've created this uh, data store and now going back into the data stores, I can see my 20 GB disk, but I still have another 20 GB available. For that, I can also make an VMFS volume. So here now I can see, would you like to create a VMFS volume or would you like to mount a NFS uh, volume here? For now, we're we are just going to create a new VMFS volume or you can extend an existing volume, meaning extend means that if you need to extend this 19 GB to 20 GB, so I can do that as well to extend that. Sometimes you need do, do need an extension. So let's extend 19 GB. So I'm saying extend the existing VMFS volume. Uh, so which volume do, would you like to extend? So I'll extend 19 GB to let's say uh, 22 GB. So here. So select device on which to create a new VMFS volume. Sir, can I say something? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, like uh, in order to add or remove any kind of disk, uh, is it uh, like this is recommended or this, this has to be done that from the host machine, you add a disk or you remove a disk, right? Now in this situation, if you are uh, uh, increasing uh, the disk size, Aren't you going to increase the disk size from the host machine first? Uh, yes. So this is why it's not letting me add extend the volume because we don't have a raw disk available. Okay. Uh, so this is why when I go and I try to extend anything, it's not, it's saying that no device is available because the half partition that is available, that is not considered as raw disk. So yes, you're hundred percent right. If I need to extend this, I need to go into the ESXi host, add a new raw disk and then extend a volume. Otherwise it won't let us extend the volume. I can create a new volume though. Thank you. So I am creating a new volume. Uh, and even that is not available because it's saying that the rest of the disk is not available that I partitioned. So maybe I can partition that volume. So here I have 40 GB and from here I can rescan. Sir, yeah. if you want to increase the 40 GB here, then uh, uh, like why you are not going to the host machine and increase the capacity of uh, this disk here first yes, from yes. the host machine. Yes. So if I need to increase this 40 GB, if I need to everyone, if I need to increase this 40 GB, then the only way to increase this 40 GB, I need to go to the ESXi host and go to settings. And within the settings, I need to increase that 40 GB from there. Uh, but here I wanted to use the other part of the partition as well. So uh, I needed to use the other part of the partition, uh, you know, because there was a 20 GB left. So I just wanted to create another data store based on that 20 GB. But okay, so, so let's sir, see. So sir, like uh, out of 40, only 20% uh, 20 uh, GB was uh, kind of uh, made volume. Uh, yes, out of 40 GB, only 20, only 19 GB was created and 19 GB should be left. Okay. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm just looking for that, but uh, I'm just going back to Navid's question, Navid, uh, that if I need to extend the existing 40 GB, I can select yes. the disk and expand from here. But right, and we need to power it off first to exactly, go into the Exactly, exactly. So right. why this is all grayed out? Because the server is running. 
if when you shut down the server, you can always expand this 40 GB to 60 GB. And then from inside the server, you can expand that as well. So yes, that is correct. And here I have different data stores available. So different data store is right here, which is this one, this disk. I can always delete the disk as well, uh, going back to actions and I can delete the disk. I can delete the disk right from here and recreate so the disk. So you can with the full rescan part. it. Like uh, once you expand the disk from the host machine, and you can uh, rescan re it. it. Right. Yes. Yes. You can rescan that uh, disk as well. Okay. Um, so guys, uh, today, uh, and so we know these basic uh, disk concepts. Ba basic disk concept is that you add a disk, then you here you will uh, make a device. Uh, as well, and then you can connect to the disk. Now here, I today uh, in the last half an hour, so we have half an hour left. So before I can start, this is a very, very important topic about uh, iSCSI storage. And I wanted to go through this iSCSI storage so, so that you have some work uh, to do before the next lecture. Uh, let's take two minutes break here, guys. Two minutes break. So just, just two minutes freshen a break. And in two minutes, we will start again. Can you go back to the slides uh, really quick, if you don't mind, Abnabe? Yes, yes, for sure. <laughs> Thank you. So two minutes fresh in a break, everyone.
Okay, guys, we're back. So let's take this uh, 20 minutes that we have. Let's try to make them useful. So I'm going to jump onto my whiteboard. So what do we need to do today is we just need to understand uh, iSCSI network. And we need to understand that how we can connect how we can connect this together, how, how, how we can use the iSCSI in this network and make it a data store. So guys, please type yes in the chat window if you're available. Uh, I know everyone might be tired, uh, but guys, just uh, let's take these 15 minutes just for understanding here. So. First of all, uh, what, what do we need to do? What do we need to do, everyone? We need to basically have uh, uh, iSCSI storage attached to our server. So first of all, our server, current server server is like this. So we have, uh, we have ESXi host, number one, and currently we have five VMs on our ESXi host. So currently we have five VMs on our ESXi host. So I'm gonna just make these uh, VMs here. So this is VM number one and VM number two, VM number three, VM number four, VM number five. Now these all VMs that we see, and I'm referring to these VMs guys. So we are trying to understand, and I am referring to these VMs here. So on our ESXi host one, these are the VMs that I'm referring to one, two, three, four, five. And there is v VCSA here as well. So that doesn't matter how many VMs and what type of VMs here. The main thing that I wanted to make sure, the, 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 the point that I wanted to make is that these VMs are stored in, in the local local disk of this ESXi host. So this, these are the VMs and they are stored where? They are, they are all stored in the local disk of ESXi host. So if I go to my storage, in the storage, these VMs are, some of them are stored in data store one and some of them are stored. So let's say if I go to my data store one here and go to data store browser, here I can see my app server 01, DB server one, and uh, web server two. So out of five VMs, uh, three VMs are stored right here. And if I go to my ISO disk, I have VCSS stored on this one. VCSS stored on this one. So guys, we do understand that this is how we can check that where is the VM stored on ESXi host. So uh, so VMs are stored. It's you need to go into the data store. So my uh, app server one VM is stored right here. If I can go into this folder, it has these this. So each VM is made up of all these files, VMX file, a configuration file. This is a disk. Uh, this is a disk file. VMDK file is a disk file, and SD is the memory file. So these are all of the files that this VM is made up of. And there might be more files as well. This is, we will learn that in another chapter. But for now, if I say that, tell me that, 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 that show me where, uh, where is your VM number, uh, let's say VM number five or your web server is stored. So you can go into the data store and show me that where is the, where is your VM is stored. So currently our VMs are stored in data store in data store one within. So we, we all understand that. Now let's look at this here. So if I can make it. So if I can make this according to this diagram, I have five VMs and these all five VMs are stored into a disk here. So I have a disk called data store one. So I'm just gonna call this data store one. And this is a disk that is available in the in this server. And basically that disk is a physical disk that is attached to the this disk. So we can call this data store one as a local disk. So this is a local disk and i have vm number one stored here vm number two stored here vm number three vm number four guys is that understandable please type yes in the chat window because i need your attention and uh, this is a simple concept so vm number one that we can see here is stored in data store one uh, vm number two is stored in data store one vm number three is data store one but these are all local storage guys the problem with the local storage is that local storage cannot provide high availability local storage can not provide high availability. Now, why am I saying local storage cannot provide high availability? So here we can understand local storage 
cannot provide high availability. This is the problem that we need to solve. Cannot provide HA, high availability. This is the problem that we need to solve. So we need to see a problem and the, then we will be able to understand the solution for the problem. So why am I saying that local storage cannot solve this problem? Guys, because let's say all the VMs are sitting in the local disk of the storage. If this ESXi host goes down or crashed, everything will be crashed. So they, so since this server is completely down and this is a local disk and this will be crashed, obviously, just like our laptop. If your laptop is dead or if your smartphone is dead and you have not taken a backup of your smartphone anywhere, your everything is gone. So these VMs are gone. So which means that local disk will never be, uh, will never be a solution in the real network. For a real production serious network, you cannot use a local storage. So for that, we do need an external storage. In order to solve this issue, the solution for this problem will be external storage. You need to have some sort of external storage in which, so we need to have outside this ESXi host, we need to bring an external storage in and then move these VMs from here to here. So instead of here, we will move all the VMs into external storage. So VM number one will be here, VM number two will be here, VM number three will be here. This will be considered as external storage. So this is our solution. And this external storage will be connected to this ESXi host. So which means now VM number one, so this is uh, VM one, this is VM two, and this is VM three. Now these VMs are not sitting in, in local storage, but they are sitting in external storage. So which means that uh, that all you need to do once they are in external storage, you, you can install another ESXi host. And if this ESXi host is down, your other ESXi host can be connected to this external storage and VM still be available. So this is the main purpose of of external storage. External storage is that if this ESXi host is down, now you're not relying only on this ESXi host. Even if this is down, the second ESXi host can. So this is known as high availability. High availability of the VMs. Why now? Because now you can access these all storage, uh, these all VMs from that other storage. Now, since we do understand now this, uh, the solution for this problem, local storage cannot provide high availability. We all understand that. And for that, we need to bring external storage. Now, the question is, what type of storage we can work on? So in order to have external storage, we have these options. So external storage we have these options. Either you can go for, first of all, you can, you need to go for a uh, block level storage. First of all, you need to go for a block level storage. So here uh, we need to understand for an external storage, we need to either go for a file level storage. You have an option for file level storage or a block level storage. Now, file level storage or a block level storage, both can provide external storage. File level storage is slow and is not good for the uh, good for our environment. And file level storage, you have two options. In file level storage, either you can go with S SMB or you can go with NFS. So NFS is one option where you can go for, but this is a slower type of storage. And in NFS, you can uh, you can have an external storage and move the VMs outside. So in, in, in selecting an external storage, guys, always remember that we do need an external place where the VMs can be accessed through many ESXi hosts. If these both goes down, then the third ESXi host will be connected to the external storage and VMs are still available. In the block level storage, you have uh, basically uh, a few options. So uh, first of all, you can go with FC storage, which is the most uh, reliable option and expensive and fast. Second, second one, you can go with FCOE. FCOE is not used in many places, only in special uh, places where you can use. But the second option, third option is iSCSI. 
Ice Kazi is an option. Both are SAN. Both are block level storage. So F C O E. I won't count that as an option. It is an option, but none of the companies are using it. Only used for in special circumstances where you need a combination of TCP and uh, SAN storage available. F C O E is only used there. But mainly, you will be faced with two options: either fiber channel storage or Ice Kazi storage. Now, who will decide this? This will be decided by your storage team and your management. This is not our decision. Whatever they will provide, what we need is an external storage. As a VMware admin, you're only interested in give me an external storage so that I can store my VMs inside. And here, uh, the management and the application team and the storage team they are deciding what type of storage do you do, do they need. If they have lot of budget available, they can go with FC. There is, I mean, and, um, I mean, this is the best option that they can go for. They can go for FC. If they go for FC, then they need to have their own infrastructure. So they will uh, request the financial department. They will buy this from the vendor, uh, and the vendor will basically provide them uh, with the complete package. And if they go with FC. If they go with FC, then FC comes with its own infrastructure. A specialist from the uh, from fiber uh, from SAN team uh, of SAN company uh, would come into your environment. They will provide an FC storage uh, that has SPs connected to this, which is storage processors connected to this. Then that connects to a FC switch. Remember that we just learned uh, that that you have an FC switch. You can uh, go back to the diagram, and that connects to HBA. That connect to HBA, and that HBA is on ESXi host. So ESXi host. So this is uh, this is one option that they can go for. Uh, they can go with FC. It has its own infrastructure. It's fast, reliable. Uh, guys, please during the week, please listen to this video one more time. Uh, maybe driving and here and there, uh, just to uh, have clear more uh, clear concepts. So ESXi host. So this is that, but the second option is iSCSI. In iSCSI, your company needs to buy just a storage a device. They just need to buy a storage device and connect it to your ESXi environment. So in the lab, what we are going to do, we are going to implement iSCSI because you cannot uh, get FC as a virtual storage or you cannot test on virtual storage. For that reason, this won't be available. But in functionality, both will be exactly the same. FC will provide you a disk. To ESXi host and iSCSI will provide you a desk to ESXi host. Now let's quickly. Yes, please go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. I want to ask you that uh, this kind of uh, external storage will be uh, connected by RJ45 or by USB. Yes, a very good, uh, a very good question. So we need to remember that FC will be connected through HBA, right? So. Uh, so F FC will be connected to HBA, whereas iSCSI will be connected to normal network card. So uh, iSCSI will be connected to net normal network card. Does that answer your question? iSCSI will be by normal network card, and the FC will uh, be FC connected to HBA. HBA, okay, got it. Okay, thank okay. you. So now uh, let's quickly understand that what are we trying to do? So here we are just understanding guys, so relax. We're not doing any lab at, at the moment. I know people are tired. Uh, so we are trying to understand now in order to implement iSCSI uh, solution in our network. So now we do understand the problem. The problem is the local disk cannot provide high availability because if the server goes down, then the local data store is not reliable. For that reason, we do not add so many disks in ESXi host because ESXi host disk is only used to host the operating system. And since we need to have these uh, virtual machines inside, these virtual machine needs to be stored in uh, outside the storage, outside the ESXi host. So virtual machine number one and two and three and four and five. So these all are all the virtual machine that needs to be stored outside. So when we create a virtual machine, this will be stored outside the ESXi host. Now, in order to do that, we already have ESXi in our environment. 
So we already have ESXi01 and ESXi01 has all these servers, uh, VMs that are sitting inside the storage. So inside the disk here, these all VMs are stored in this, in this disk. We need to move them into external storage. In order to move them in external storage, everyone, uh, we have a virtual storage, virtual SCSI uh, software that we can use to do this. And that is known as OpenFiler. OpenFiler is a company that can provide us, that can simulate an iSCSI storage in our network. And uh, so what, what we do is we will go into the OpenFiler website and download OpenFiler. So I'm just gonna go there. Here, OpenFiler. So open filer is basically a, uh, it's, it's an open filer platform. It's open platform software defined storage and open filer is an operating system that provides uh, file based network attached storage and it's a block level storage. So it's a sand storage. So all we need to do is to, uh, and I'll share this link here. I'll share this link. Uh, you need to start downloading now so that it can be downloaded. And once you go to this link, everyone, just open that in your laptop and then go to download. And when you go to download, uh, we need to download this. This will provide an ISO file. So here the open file distribution is available as an installable ISO file. So first of all, we need to download. I think this will take some time for you to download. So for that reason, we are just downloading it right now. I've shared the link here. And once we download this, so I'm downloading uh, this link here. Yes, should we uh, download it in uh, EXI host server or uh, just our own? No, no, computer? on your laptop on your laptop. So this should be downloaded on your laptop. And what is it doing? Is it letting me download or it's just? You have to go uh, lower actually. Uh, that's where the thing is. Oh yes, right here, right here, right here. Yes, it's here on the download. And once we download this, so it should start downloading now. And this is basically, this is an iSCSI SAN. So this will let us download the iSCSI SAN and it's saying the download starts shortly. And this is downloading. I'm gonna save that. So we don't need to open that. We need to save it. So once what exactly we- What is this, sir? What exactly is this? Is this a storage uh, uh, template or? Yes, this is a story. This is a this is a storage uh, ice uh, open filer ice cuzzy storage uh, device. It's a it's a virtual storage basically. Okay. Just like a virtual server, so this will be a virtual storage, and uh, so we will configure this storage so that we can uh, we can store the VMs in the external. So this will be simulating external storage. Okay, but it, uh, how much is the capacity? Like, let, let's suppose we have got 20 GB size. Right. Of so, yes, so we can add disks to that. So we can, once it is downloaded, it will act as a storage box. So basically, okay. if I go to here, this will, this will act exactly like, this will ex exactly like this, this uh, blue box that you're saying. And then later on, we'll add disks to this. So we will add disks and then uh, and then we will configure the disk and then provide it to ESXi host. So at the moment, what we are doing, we are downloading this disk array, this, uh, this storage box. So once it is downloaded and you can see the size, file size is 5.7, 507. So we will be downloading and this is how it will look like. So uh, while this is downloading, I'll show you guys in the in VMware workstation, we have ESXi host and in VMware workstation, everyone, uh, we will go and create a new virtual machine and I will show you how this, uh, this is created. So once it is created, this will be exactly like this server. So right here, this will open filer will be like this, another VM in VMware workstation and we will name it open filer server. So we will name this server as open filer server. So open filer server or open filer SRV01, we can call this open filer SRV. So is it just like a regular VM? Uh, exactly, the... exactly, yes. It will be added as a regular VM. So once it is installed, then we will con configure this. 
Okay, sounds good. Okay, so right so, here once. Yeah, sorry, yes. sorry. To Let's go ahead. Uh, so do we do uh, VM ESXi six X on the operating system? Oh, okay. So uh, if you're already downloaded this, no, you yeah. have to select Linux and then other Linux. So first of all, uh, let me see if it is downloaded. I can quickly show it to you right here. So yes, it is downloaded. And all I need to do, guys, if you're not following me, it's fine. This is being uh, this is being recorded. So all we need to do is to just set up this basic uh, uh, machine. All I need to do is go to home and create a new VM. So when you create a new VM, you need to provide the ISO and ISO will be the same ISO that we have downloaded here. I'm going there and in this, I need to select the disk, which will be connected to my downloads. So in the download, I have this open filer and open and next. So it's reading the disk and in here, I need to select Linux. So you need to select Linux and in the Linux, you can select any one of them. Uh, it will be others Linux 2.4 kernel uh, 60. So this is also Linux based or here you can select any one of them. It will work fine, but you cannot select Ubuntu or you, you cannot select uh, uh, Red, Hat, Red Hat or Debian or any other Linux, but it can work with other Linux. So you can select this one uh, Linux 2.4 X kernel 64. So Linux and this and this is the only difference the way we create all other VMs inside. So when you select open file or select Linux and this and next and here provide a name. Open filer 01 or serve 01, you can name it anyway. And here the basic disk will be 8 GB to start with. So basic disk will be 8 GB. Uh, you don't need, so this is the this is the disk that it requires for the operating system. This is not the disk where it the VMs will be stored. Uh, basically, this will act as an external disk. So we will create add the disk later on. For now, we'll just leave it as is. Maximum disk capacity is 8 GB. And rest is uh, we don't need to do anything else or you can what you can do is you can add more disks here we can add disks later on. So for now, this once this VM is uh, so this is just like a normal VM everyone I think uh, uh, till this time it's nothing surprising everyone knows how to create a VM. We just downloaded this ISO and then we uh, created this ISO here and once it is on and there are few other options that we need to do and then this will be configured. So here, just like any other operating system, it is asking for a few things and you can go with just it's just logical option. So for, for we'll go with the first option to install and upgrade the graphical uh, mode and press enter. And in this, as soon as you press enter, it will load, load up some files. Guys, remember that it is creating a storage here. So storage meaning that our ESXi server is sitting here. Our Windows server is also sitting here. This is the new server that we are creating for open filer. So open filer server, and this is what is being con configured here. So in this, it is just setting that up. So once this sets, once it set up the server, uh, what happens is that the next. So on this screen, it says next. And here we just need to select the keyboard and uh, here just select. Now in here, it, uh, it's showing us the disk that it has and we don't need to do anything. We just need to go next on this. This is the first disk that it is creating. It's just saying uh, partition is okay. You do not define root partition, which is required for. 
I have a different uh, uh, different error here. I could not allocate requested partition partitioning field. Not even there are not enough space left to create partition. Oh yes, yes. It needed more space actually. It needed at least uh, twenty GB to start with. So that's what I was thinking at that point. Uh, when we created this v, uh, open filer, it needed at least forty GB where it can partition for different space. Okay, so in that case, I'll have to basically, we can add a disk here, but we'll go with, uh, I just wanted to uh, keep this installation simple. So I have to shut that down and uh, I have to shut that down and create again so we will create again i think uh, for today it's fine guys i will uh, so let me actually for you if you want to do that on your own let me share a video for this and then we will continue that in the next lecture though awesome that's great thank you but hold on let me just get uh let me get get a video for are this. you going to make a video uh, are you going to post a video or uh, you will share some videos no no i will for now internet. for now i will share with you a video uh so that you can uh so that you can at least do that try to do that on your own just a second just a second give me a second here So, Nanbai, how much do we have to give it? So, uh, would 40 GB be enough? Uh, yeah, 40 GB. <laughs> Just give it 40 GB. Okay. Installing open filer. Yes, it's right here. This one, this video, part one and part two. Two videos. So, these are the two videos that I'm going to share in the WhatsApp group. So installing open filer, this is a vSphere 5.5, but it's not too different from uh, 6.7, uh, 6 okay? But open filer video, this one, part one and part two, you need to complete. You need to complete. This is exactly what we are doing just now, uh, but there are so many steps that you need to do. So make sure you have a fresh mind, uh, kind of, you have slept well, and then you can do it. Otherwise, it, will give, it might give you some... Uh, some, you know, uh, some tough, it might not give you a tough time. It might be a straightforward installation, uh, but uh, uh, I would say just start fresh on this. Okay. Okay, so I'll share this link here and you need to do part one and part two. Okay, guys, so please uh, do that before the next lecture. And uh, if you have any question, any, anywhere you, where you're stuck, just let me know in the, in the, in the WhatsApp and we will continue this. We have, just, uh, we have just, I've just shared with you very basic information and we'll go into more detail in the next lecture. But if you can do it before the lecture, that will be excellent, please. Where did you share the uh, answer? I am just sharing the open filer installation and configuration. So, so right my... here, right here, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, so, I'm, so I want you to do video number 13 and 14. I'm sharing these two videos here. I shared the link on the group, sir, the chat window. Yes, yes, I am just sharing it now. So I have a question, sir, open yeah, filer. Yes, if we want to increase from 8 GB to 40 GB, how do we do it in VMware? Like um, we have to remove no, no, it no. Yes. and add it? No, 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 don't, do, don't go into that path. That can work too. I mean, you can increase, expand the disk if you can do it. But I would say just start fresh. Delete that uh, VM and create a new VM when it comes to the disk space. Uh, just add, uh, just change 8 GB to 40 GB. Okay, thank you. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Naveed. You just shared the link. And yes, uh, so guys, I will share that in the WhatsApp group as well. And please review the disk. It's not a difficult technology. Again, uh, all we need to do is to have a little bit focus on this. And by the end of the training, you will feel more and more confident. Okay, everyone, this is all awesome. for today. And we will see each other in the next lecture.
Uh, yes, I'm, I'll add you to the WhatsApp group, Abdullah. Abdullah, do you uh, can you just ping me on WhatsApp? Do you have my WhatsApp number? I think I have, yeah. I or you have. can share your number. I can add you there because I, I couldn't find you in the... Are you in the Canep Society Forum group? I Yes, I have. From there only I picked up. Okay. This is okay. my number. Okay. If you can just ping me, uh, then I will add you to the WhatsApp group. Okay, I'll add you to the WhatsApp group now. Thank you. Okay, you're most welcome. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see each other in the next lecture. Thank you. Before you go, can you just check uh, my DHCP? Yes, yes, uh, for sure, for sure. Uh, show me your DHCP and share with me your screen. Oh, still you are... Okay. Sir. Okay, so your IP address is one ninety two one fifty. Okay. Uh, but hold on. This is your scope is hundred dot zero, but your DHCP IP address is one fifty dot something. Oh, if you go yeah. back to the local server, your this is different. So. Oh, yes. Right. So this is, so your problem is the scope uh, and the IP address. Okay. okay. I got it. So by the way, uh, uh, I just checked it, you know, like. Uh, it's no, no, everything is fine. You do understand everything. So you disabled DHCP on accident. You did everything fine, but you saw your problem. It's just a different scope. Oh, okay. So the scope should be the like servers, right? Exactly. Yes. Oh, okay then. Okay. okay. Very good. See you in the next lecture, inshallah. Yes. Um,